Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Look Forward. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Brad. You know, even though it's only been five days and there's only really like a handful of really big stories. Holy shit, what a week. In fact, it is. Um, I I want to say that I'm not going to have a rant on this episode. Oh, dude, we're both, know- we're both, we're both going to get super pissed yeah. about yeah. stuff because just like... I, I, and again, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm not, by nature, a conspiratorial person. I think most conspiracies that are concocted are pretty ridiculous and easily yes. have can have holes that get poked in them. But boy, howdy, it sure does look like uh, six people in a courthouse in Washington, D.C. are conspiring with other members of their political party to insulate uh, the God King yes. for some reason. There, there is, there is no way that the six of the the six conservative justices on the Supreme Court is who we're referring to, uh, which should be obvious by by now. But um, there's no way that they're not talking to each other. There's just, like the way, the level of perfect threading mm-hmm. on their immunity charge, uh, which were or their immunity ruling, the way it was done. Is a it's it's just a perfect storm of evil, right? Like it just is. There's mm-hmm. no way that they all miraculously came to this perspective all by themselves. It does not make any sense. This well, is, no, they. I mean, they they, they, they do talk to each other when writing opinions. I mean, that's why typically only one person writes the opinion sure. because they speak for everybody. So that's that. I, I'm saying outside of the Supreme. Oh no, Court, no. But what I'm saying, I feel no, like I there's some. I, yeah, I think some that there was absolutely there. someone says if you do it this way. If you mm-hmm. thread the needle exactly this way, this gives us the wiggle room that we need and and shields you and us at the same time. No, I think it's 100% um, driven. I think it's largely driven by the Heritage Foundation, but I think it absolutely is in cahoots with the Republican Party, um, the National Republican Party, 100%. 100%. There's no way that these guys came up with this idea. So it, it is unbelievably – it's almost – if I wasn't so angry at the outcome, it's impressive in how well mm-hmm. it's done. And we're going to talk about it because, again, there are aspects to this that I think people are missing. There are aspects. Oh, I, there, there, there are 100 percent aspects that people are missing um, because there is a lot of nuance. And, and I, I said before we started recording that this ruling – and and I mean, we should probably just get into it instead of alluding around it because yeah, yeah, you know we're talking in circles around. So, the Supreme Court on their last day of the term finally announced their decision on the uh, Trump immunity case, and they have decided. Bas- basically, the decision kind of is it's it's four parted that they that they decide on presidential immunity. The part that I'm actually like least offended about is that they said that the president has absolute immunity from criminal prosecution for clearly official act. So what they're talking about here is any function that the president has that is coded in the Constitution, that's in the Article 2 powers of the Constitution, they cannot be criminally charged for, 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 for using those powers, essentially, which makes sense. You have to have, yeah, like, like the Constitution says it's okay, fine. The the really weird part of it, and this is probably where we're going to spend most of our time, is they said that the president has presumed immunity for official acts that are not specifically called out right. in Article 2. Right. Okay. And then they said that they he has no immunity for acts that are outside of the purview of his office of president. Now, the part that I think people are glossing over that really just spews a fucking morass of bullshit into this whole thing is that not only does the president have presumed immunity around acts that are official but not specifically codified, Mm -hmm. but also if you do charge the president with something where it's outside of their purview as president or it's in that gray area where it's like hey we're not really sure if this is if this could be considered official or unofficial you cannot use any official communications that the president has 
as evidence to support a charge right. against it. Which is which bad. functionally, Makes which, which functionally in, in, inocul as long as they're going through official channels to coordinate this stuff, it functionally inoculates them from doing it. So, so let me just kind of ask my interpretation of what this ruling essentially does. So let's say that, and, and this hypothetical has been bandied about, but I think it's the clearest way to understand it. Let's say the president has a meeting with somebody and they say to him, hey, I have a relative who is in federal prison and I'm going to give you $10 million if you pardon him. Right. Okay. Pardoning a federal prisoner is within the president's official purview. Like it's in the constitution. He's allowed to do it. Fine. Bribery is a crime that I would argue falls outside of the president's uh, purview. Uh, if you pardon him and then I pay you afterwards. Is it right. Really that bad? <laughs> so you could still charge the president with bribery after he's out of the office for this pardon. But any communication that Trump has with the justice department, in, ter- in, in terms of, like, forcing the pardon through, can't use it as evidence at all to, to charge him with bribery. So, essentially, you have a crime that doesn't have any evidence supporting it. So, functionally, you cannot charge him and, 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 and correctly prosecute him for bribery because all of the evidence of that would be behind lock and key. Right. right as, as a function of, uh, of, of, of his duty. You getting it yet? This yeah. is, I mean, again, if it wasn't so evil, you have to respect the level of brilliance that they, that they put, the effort that they put in to insulate this piece of shit, right? In themselves, by the way. Here's another aspect of it that I, this is the thing, and I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. That's, that's very good because I haven't heard a lot of people talking about that. Um, but here's another aspect of it that I find to be deeply, deeply irritating, and it tends to, it gives an opening to mm-hmm. Democrats and to, to liberal-minded folks, but it's a small one, right? People are mistaking what immunity means, right? Mm-hmm. People are saying, oh, well, he has immunity for official acts of the president, right? Um, and let's take, a, let's take out the whole idea of like the particular communications or whatever. Like take all of that out. Let's say he's sending – let's say he's, he's doing an official act – and it's easy to say, okay, if Trump decides he wants to drone strike Joe Biden's house or whatever is an official mm-hmm. act, he could get away with it. That's quite true. Like if he was president, bar none, he's, he cannot be prosecuted for that, right? Here's the rub. People have said, oh, well, why doesn't Joe Biden just say, cool, I, this isn't an official act. I'm going to, I'm going to say that, you know, women have the right, you know, to body autonomy, you know, bodily autonomy, it's just it's done, right? I've decreed it, right? Type of thing. Um, two things. Immunity from prosecution does not mean that it is – it cannot be overturned as not being legal by the mm-hmm. Supreme Court. And that is a thing I think pe- people are saying, oh, then Biden is immune from all this – immune from prosecution. That does not mean that it just becomes law. That's not how that works. The other aspect of this is immunity from what, right? It's an official act. All of the, the reason why people, and I don't know if people really realize why they're scared, but here's why you should be absolutely scared of this. The immunity clause only really affects things you cannot reverse, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you say, all right, well, I'm going to make I'm going to make this, you know, this is an official thing. Uh the White House has control of or right, like we'll talk about the Chevron uh situation, right? Where they basically gutted all these powers from all of these uh federal agencies to regulate, potentially regulate businesses. Hi, I'm President Joe Biden. I I have decreed because I'm, you know, king now. I have decreed that that is bullshit and, you know, we're going to go back to the old ways, right? He is immune from prosecution, so meaning these companies cannot sue Joe Biden for doing that. That doesn't mm-hmm. mean that the Supreme Court couldn't just – well, I guess they can't, they can't take it to court. But like the idea that it just becomes a hard law, you have to still pass laws through Congress. 
right? Like, like yeah. To to your point, this only affects like literal crimes ex- that the president thing, could potentially right, commit. Right. Things that are not reversible: drone striking someone, having someone arrested and thrown into a fucking gulag. These are things that are once they how, have started, they are already started. That how, is how how about about. how how about an example that's not a hypothetical? Uh, because the last president, when people were protesting outside the White House, asked his Secretary of Defense, "Well, why can't we just shoot him in the legs? Why can't we just shoot legs. those guys in the legs?" Legs. Oh, did I miss? Is that your chest? Yeah. Um, now I w- I will bring up an important point. Just because the president is immune from being criminally prosecuted for carrying out an illegal act does not mean that the other people in the chain that is correct enjoy that same immunity fyi so just just one little reminder for anyone that's thinking about going along for the ride with uh old donnie t yeah buddy you you can still go to jail for sure like (laughs) he's gonna protect you and here's the thing he'll he'll be safe by the way you shouldn't go along with him you know why because not only you fucked because you don't have immunity but you don't have any evidence to use like, no, but here's a communication where the president said it was okay. No, buddy, that's not involved in this case anymore because that's an official presidential act. So either you have access to that communication or you don't, right? If the president is involved by this, by this logic, you should not, they should not be able, if they are suing you, they should not be able to get that communication. Now, like, again, it's a gray area because we don't know, right? Mm-hmm. But I would argue that if that does allow them, and it's a, that'd be an interesting test, by the way, if that does allow somebody to get, you know, they're suing Joe Schmo in the Trump administration, let's say, and they are allowed to get the communication. Well, the way that you the way that you do this is you cripple this guy from underneath, right? You don't go after him; mm-hmm. you just cripple him. You go after every because he can't do shit on it. Yeah, own. like a like a mob boss. <laughs> yeah, you just cripple <laughs> everyone underneath him. Um, until he cannot operate. But my guess is that's not how it works. Because again, this is written incredibly well that there is well, no and way also they, he would, could, they would allow that. No way. And also if they were convicted, he could just pardon them anyway because it, it would be federal, of course, federal charges. Of course, of course. Well, so. it, but it all depends, right? It depends. If it's a state right. charge, right? Now, of course, by the way, Trump came out uh, yesterday, I think it was, and said, mm-hmm. no big deal. Um, the whole fake elector thing, official business. Oh, well, well, and that's 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 the part that's incredibly frustrating is that the way this is written seems hyper focused and hyper targeted mm-hmm. to benefit him specifically in this specific situation. Like that's that's the multiple, part that's the most frustrating about it for him. Yeah, because now and, and again, this was in relation to the January 6th case that's in D.C. Now this has to go back to Judge Shutkin and she has to have hearings. To basically determine what is an official act, what is kind of an official act, and what is Trump acting personally. And oh, by the way, for the stuff that we determine he was acting, you know, outside of his capacity in office, what evidence is necessary to prove that crime beyond a reasonable doubt? And is it accessible now? Because how much of this was, you know, all these conversations that Trump had with his deputy attorney general are now technically inadmissible because that that's the president talking to, you know, a member of his cabinet, essentially. Yeah. So all the, all that stuff you can't do. And the Georgia case has the same problem because where do you draw the line between this is Donald Trump, the president, and this is Donald Trump, the candidate running for president? Like, where, like, like that line becomes incredibly blurry. And that's why this decision is so fucked up. It is fucked up. But again... It it is brilliantly written for this very fact, right? And why they think that this is the guy, I do not know. I do not. Yeah, know. the dude. Like I can, I, I can almost that. understand it if this was a dude who was like fifty five years old, like the fucking leader of the next wave of the Republican Party, right? Handpicked, but like, like this guy's gonna be fucking dead in ten years, sooner if we're lucky. Like, why are you laying it all on the line for this fucking idiot? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And in, in reality, it's not for him. It is It is a signal to him so he can do – because, look, give him the reins. He is going to do super damage. He is going to do mm-hmm. a lot of damage. Um, but it's for the next guy. 
the 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 fifty year old guy. Well, that that's, that's, that's that 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 and the goal really looking for. That's what they're looking. For. Well, that 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 and the goal is just to get him in there. Like they didn't really give a shit about him. To your point, they just wanted to get in there because they know he'll let them, you know, go buck wild and do all this fucking nonsense that they that they want to try to do. Yep. So. And the second he keels over, they're going to replace him with a fucking 45 year old fucking piece of shit. Like they will. And then, and then that will be, here's your, I, I'm not sure we even need elections type of guy. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and here's, and here's the thing. So I've been, I've been, so on, on your recommendation, I started reading uh, that book cast um, by yeah. Isabel Wilkerson. Yeah. Um, and I, and I also listened to like a bunch of like history podcasts and shit like that nerd and it's and it's funny because people think that like when authoritarian regimes happen or when dictatorships happen in in places that it's just like it happens like a lightning and all of a sudden like this strong man is there and he's like you know what this fucking democracy shit ain't working out so good anymore so i'm a dictator i'm gonna tell you like it is this is fucking happening that's not how dictatorships happen that's not how authoritarian regimes happen it's more of the frog boiling in the pot. It's like like the way the dictatorships come to pass is they convince you that what they're doing this oh this isn't authoritarianism this is democracy. Yep. This is democracy. Like Vladimir Putin still has elections every five years, and it just so happens that like ninety percent of Russians vote for Vladimir Putin, quote unquote. And, and and so, like, he can say, look, this is democracy. The people keep electing me. What am I supposed to do? Just not run for president? No, the, peop- the people want me here. This, this is actually democracy. And, and it, it perverts the legislation. It perverts the courts. And then once they have the absolute power, either they can just kind of rock with it because they already have all the levers of government well in hand that, that's, that's, you know, coming to heel under that person or that's when the shift happens where the, where the legislation passes the laws to say, you know, actually this one guy has all the power. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to switch it from the, the rule of law to the law of rule. That's, that's going to be what we fucking yeah, do here. Absolutely. I, I mean, one of the things that you, one of the things that you can see very clearly is this mindset um, that because we survived four years of Trump, we could do it again. Here's the thing. There's a million people who didn't quite literally. Mm -hmm. There's a million people who did not. Um, That's not hyperbole. It's literally (laughs) at least, at least a million, right? It's more than a million. Um, But I think people underestimate and I, and I think maybe one of these days, I think it might be one of these days coming really soon. It might be really relevant for us to do kind of a special episode um, Mm -hmm. where we go through what is in Project 2025? Because mm-hmm. I don't think, I think people are like, oh, it sounds really scary. It's fucking terrifying. And when the ball gets rolling on that, it, excuse me, if the ball gets rolling on that, this is not a slow, like, like Brad's talking about this sort of, sort of slow boil thing. That's been over the last eight years, really. Mm-hmm. Right? He came in, he, you know, he came on, you know, came on the scene. He wins that election that four years. And then even when, when Biden won, there's always been this boiling going on, right? Mm-hmm. Be, like the Republican Party is shifting harder and harder to the right, harder and harder. They're, they're coming out with like crazier and crazier policies, crazier and crazier policies. And it's like, why is that happening? Because the heat's getting turned up, dude. Like that's why. And we are noticing it. But 50% of the country doesn't pay attention. Actually, probably more than 50%. No, but it's, more, it's more than 50%. It's but not but I'm, I'm just saying of like the voters, right? Like people who actually vote 50 or of voting age, 50% of those people don't vote. They don't ever pay attention to this shit. So you're feeling the temperature get hotter, right? Because you're paying attention to it and you're like, all right, there's like a lot of bubbles in this fucking pot. Like what the fuck is going on? But for a lot of people, they don't know. And then all of a sudden they're going to wake up one day and it's like, these things are banned. These things are no longer allowed. These are your mm-hmm. enemies. These are your friends. It's patriotism or it's death. And they're going to go, well, fuck, I guess, it's, I guess it's patriotism. Like, 
We are a we are primed as the United States. We are primed for this shit because we are jingoistic as fuck, and we never question things. We don't mm-hmm. question things at all. Oh, they said it. Fucking hell yeah, bro. That's it. Put a, an American flag behind it. Get a get a fucking rah rah speech. People just turn off. They okay. Fucking hell yeah, man. Can I still cook my hamburgers and hot dogs on Fourth of July? Rock and fucking roll. Like that's. That's all you need is to keep that sort of semblance of normal <laughs> mid <laughs> Midwest American life going. And I think a lot of people don't pay attention, dude. They just don't. You you, you just reminded me of the irony of this decision coming out literally the week yes. that we celebrate the uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the uh, declaring of our independence from. Yeah. 248 from years. We, we, we made it three days shy of 248 years. I don't know that the Republic, if people don't get off their fucking asses, I don't know that the Republic makes it 250. I don't. I don't well, here's so I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned making people pay attention. So I, I think if there is a silver lining to this, there is and there is only one. Is that I feel like that this decision has the ability to reach people who don't typically tune into politics because yeah. of how simple i mean we we went through and this decision is actually complex but it can be described simply as that the supreme court has decided that in many aspects the president is above the law yeah. and that's and that's basically how you can boil that down and i think that the average person if you say that to them and hey hey, hey the supreme court decided hey the president can do whatever he wants he's above the law if he, you know if he does something really fucked up he can't be charged for it. They're gonna be like, wait a second, that that doesn't sound right. No, and better, so a better way of saying it is that the president is a king. That's people think yeah. pe- people yeah. understand what that is, right? Like people have a weird understanding of like what presidents can and cannot do, which is always yeah. drives me crazy around politics. But if you say that the president is now essentially a king, people understand that. It's a it's a simple yeah. way of saying it. So to dem- any Democrats, pol- Democratic politicians that may be listening. If you were ever going to have an opening to make Supreme Court reform palatable to the general electorate, this is it. This is the time. Yeah, this is the time because, and and again, what you can do is pretty limited because again, li- lifetime terms are in the Constitution. You have to pass a constitutional amendment to get rid of that. And you're not having Republican states <laughs> sign on to that, no. but you can certainly change the numbers on the court. You can certainly change, tweak aspects of how you know how they hear their cases. Mm-hmm. Guess what? This re- uh, this is something I didn't even know about until recently. Did you know that the Supreme Court only got the ability to control what cases they heard themselves in the late eighties, nineteen eighties? Wow! No, I did not know that. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that, and 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 the re- the way that they got that is Congress passed a law granting them that power. Oh, so. That's an interesting if you, little wrinkle. Yeah. yeah. So so if you uh time if you to, were to, to pull that shit back, get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, but I say if you if you were to uh if you were to, you know, win back Congress and if you get some Democrats with some balls who are like, hey, now the time for fu- the fucking filibuster is is done. Yeah. We need to we need to start taking the gloves off and, and make some shit happen. Yes. Then yeah, absolutely we can potentially do some stuff there, but you got to talk about it. You get like, like it's great yeah. that Biden came out, you know, with, 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 with righteous anger about the decision, but it can't just be, I'm, I'm very disappointed in this. It's yeah. gotta be, we're going to fucking do something about it. Yeah. No, look, I thank you. That is a perfect, that is a perfect uh, moment to take a break because I think that there is now, now that we have established how fucked things are, let's talk about solutions. You have one shot with three. Do not miss your chance to blow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) You got you got one. You got one shot. It's not a difficult one, but you got one. You have to win this election. That is obvious, right? But the the one shot. This is a long. This is a long shot, but. as far as like it's multiple uh, steps, but it is one shot and it is doable. You have to win in 2024. You have to win the presidency. You have to hold the Senate. 
You have to. And, the, and you have to win the house. And the house, right. So that is important, right? It is possible. And it is very, very much doable. In order to do that, you need to make the case that this isn't just like Trump is bad. This is the death of the democracy as we know it. And you need to you need to be honest about it. You need to start talking about what comes next from these assholes, Project 2025. You need to say this stuff. And you need to say it in detail. And you need to say it clearly. And, and there's more, but and, you need to make this so fucking clear that the media cannot ignore it. This cannot just be from a couple of uh, fucking AOC, et cetera. No, I need Joe Biden to say it. I need Kamala Harris to say it. I need Obama to say it. I need them to look. If they got a, if they got a weekend at Bernie's Jimmy Carter out there, do it. Get everybody to understand. And by the way, you have a, you have a unique fucking opportunity, Democrats. You have a unique, unique opportunity because you have Republicans who think this is wrong. Get them up there together. George W. Bush doesn't agree with this shit. Cheney doesn't agree with this shit. Liz Cheney doesn't agree with this shit. And they are fucking mortal enemies of the people that you support. This is a rare time to say, look, maybe Marjorie Taylor Greene's a little right. We are fucking unified for once about this. We may disagree on all of these other details, but death of the democracy is not the way to go forward on this. So that's, that's part A, okay? The other part of this is so you have to win those – you have to win the House, the Senate, and the uh, presidency this year, right? You got to go three for three. It's not impossible, right? You you stopped the red wave in a midterm where you controlled um, the White House. That is fucking unprecedented. So you, you can do it. The second part is you have got to win the uh, – what is it? Was it 2020? You have to win 2028, right? Mm-hmm. In that time that you've won this 2024 election and you have um, the House and the Senate, hopefully you have it by enough, you need to do court reform. You have to do it. Expand the well, court well, and, and, and again, you're not, you not going to have to. You're, you're not going to get a supermajority no, or, 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 even a, or even a legislative supermajority. You're not, you're not going to get that in the Senate. So you have to. You have to kill a filibuster. You have to take the gloves yes. off. Like, like you, you 100%. can, like, like the Repu- the Republicans nice. have been playing, have not been playing by the rules for years now. And right now, the Democrats are fucking are fighting with one arm tied behind they're their back guys. because they're I not mean, willing. Yeah, they're yeah. they're they're not willing to push the envelope. By the way, killing the filibuster, not illegal, not against the rules. Like it's yeah. it's it's certainly nowhere near Mitch McConnell just fucking holding hostage a Supreme Court seat for for a year. And, and it's it's not thing. not that at all. Here's the thing. Not only is it not illegal, not only is it something you should do and that you need to do, stop giving a fuck about what the media is going to say negatively about it. Hey, yeah, you guys killed the filibuster. Was that fair? Was all this other shit fair that these assholes did? They were trying to fuck over democracy? Next question. Let's go. Stop asking. Stop waiting for them to give approval, right? Stop waiting for it. Because that's it. Oh, we don't want to get beat up. Uh. Mog is beating you guys up for existing. Let him beat you up for doing something, right? Make him yeah. earn it. Right? As, as as Pete Buttigieg uh, likes to say, uh, when asked about like, "Hey, don't aren't you worried about uh, what Republicans are going to think about you?" Like, push the envelope in the shoes. Like, they're going to call a socialist no matter what we do. So we might as well fucking do some good. Yeah, goddamn right. So so yeah. okay. So that's so that's part A. Win twenty twenty four. All of that, and and push for court reform. Right. Like this is this is very real. Right. And, and actually, the probably the biggest part of that is killing the filibuster that like the hands. You, have, you have to. You have to. You have, you have to. I mean, it's the, only, it's the only way you can make it happen. So. Right. And look, I'm going to say something. It's going to sound super controversial. Stay with me. Do not get mired in the ideas of trying to fix. This is, it's going to sound offensive. And I know it is. Any pet projects. Okay. What I mean by that, what I'm including in that, and just hear me out, do not get mired in bodily autonomy um, legislation. Do not get mired in, um, you know, uh, you know, allowing um, marriage equality. 
or anything below those. Do not get mired in it. And the reason I am saying that is not because I don't think those things are important. They are incredibly important. They are top tier important. But you working on those, and it's, it's going to feel like if you get that power, that's the thing to fix. No. Because if you fix those things and you don't fix the core issue, which is the democracy is fundamentally broken, you are just throwing, hey, we did this thing. And then when those guys get in power, they will rip them out again. So you cannot spend or or they'll or or you'll be stopped in the first place because somehow it'll get challenged in court and then you have this Supreme Court sitting there that's just gonna hold knock down whatever over. right yeah so I I'm not denigrating those things as being important they're incredibly important I'm not a woman I'm not a part of the LGBTQ community so it may seem like I'm like oh just push those down no that's not what I'm saying look if they all of a sudden said Loving versus Virginia was fucking illegal look. That affects me directly. Like, I'm also saying uh, to the side for a not, second. Not, like, not anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. I was in Mexico. Like, I'm good. <laughs> they can't come down here. Um, that's right. But, but, and that's why we moved just for that reason. No, but like, I still think that has to be put to the side because all you're doing when you're concentrating on those things in this particular moment, not always, but in this particular moment, you are, ch- you are just rearranging the chairs on the Titanic. Because the mm-hmm. fundamental issue is that the democracy is broken. So you need to use, like, it's like when Obama went after um, health care. He spent all of his political will getting that football across the line. You need to spend all of your political will getting democracy codified and across the line, which means expanding the court, which means getting these nutballs off of the court when they die or retire. That, like... That is the focus. The court is the focus. Everything. Everybody. Look, if you are left-leaning, you're hard left, middle left, fucking center, whatever. If you are like one of these assholes who has a podcast that talks about politics, hello, um, any of those people, there needs to be a full court push that everybody is like, all right, we don't agree on a lot of this shit, but like this part is really important. Everybody shut the fuck up. We're all one-minded here. Like you have – in order to fix this, you have to fix the democracy. We can fight yeah. about all this shit when the democracy is secured. We cannot fight about little pin- penny anything. things. Again, I'm not, I'm not denigrating those things. But you cannot worry about the details when the body is dying, right? You can't be like, right. well, I got to make sure my hair is cut. Motherfucker, your, your, your dick's falling off. <laughs> like like body, <laughs> body parts are falling off. You have to save the body first. Then yeah. once you have the democracy secured, then you can worry about, look, because once you fix it and you're fixing it fundamentally where you have a court that has 13 justices, where you actually have, you know, a proper court that's not run by a bunch of psychopaths. And yeah. All this and actual, an actual, an actual code of ethics. By the way, you want to guarantee, then, you want to guarantee, uh, much easier to do. They're much easier to do. You want to, you want to guarantee Clarence Thomas retires during a uh, democratic presidential term. Uh, make it so that he can't receive gifts from his billionaire benefactors, and then all of a sudden he's going to leave because he's got RV things. He can't a fuck. He can't fucking afford a just a, a mere Scotus judge's salary. Get the how fuck am out! I of to, here. How am I to survive? <laughs> My God, I'm a regular it's, guy. Yeah, it's one know. banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? <laughs> here, take ten dollars and go uh, watch yourself a Star War. Um, like <laughs> she had no idea about money. It was funny. Um. That is that is fundamental, right? That is the that is the fundamental goal is to shore up the democracy. If you do anything else, if you work at anything else before finishing that, it is for nothing. It is for nothing. And and and, and I think that I think that that's something that because again, voters are not blind, right? Now. Like like they can see that there's some that there's some fucked up stuff going on that they've never seen before. I think that's a message that you can take to voters to get them excited to turn out. And, you know, just frame it as, hey, like you're like right now you're losing your voice. Like Republicans want to take your voice away. Yeah. So and we want to help you keep it. And and to your point, what you said earlier, you might be able to get some sensible Republicans to join you on yeah, this you on on this mission, especially if you give them a say. You know what I mean? Like, hey, like we we want this to be bipartisan. Like we want you to help us craft this. But the shit that's going on right now cannot the the, the country cannot stand it. Because what's going to happen, because again, as, as we talk about all the fucking time, Republicans incapable of, you know, seeing the far, you know, the forest through the trees, there will be a shitbag Democrat who will take advantage of these policies at some point in time, at one point or another. And they're going to be really fucking unhappy 
when it happens. Yeah. Uh, look, there is um, like people need to understand that this is dire. And I and I know it's always dire. Not according to John Roberts, Jay. Like according to him, all the people that dissented, the, the justices that dissented, they're just fear mongering. What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. Okay, buddy. Um, yeah. <laughs> you say that as they come and rip you out of your house over this shit at some point. Okay. Yep. Um, people need to understand how dire this is. So winning 2024 is, is uh, tantamount to keeping the democracy open, keeping it running. Winning in 2028 is incredibly important. And then winning in, um, was that 2032? Um, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, time is slipping by so quick. Yeah, and, 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 by, and by the way, to help contextualize this for people that aren't like fucking nerds, like like Jay and I and people listening to this podcast, if anyone in your life like has confusion about this, they're like, well, well like, what does this ruling really mean? Uh, this ruling, if it existed 50 years ago, means that Richard Nixon would have served out the rest of his presidential term because he could not have been charged with, with criminal conduct, so therefore he wouldn't have had to resign. And that would have fucking happened. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm going to tell you right now, this, I like with this immunity situation and all the other shit that the Supreme court did, it's going to sound crazy, but I don't think it's that nuts to think that Trump's VP could very well be one of his kids. I'm telling you, I I, like, I don't think it's that nuts because at this point he's being told you get to do this for as long as you want. You want to just stick around for another four years? Just stick around for another four years. It's an official act. What is the Supreme Court going to do? They're going to challenge him? You've told this guy that he is immune from basically doing drone strikes on anyone, killing anyone in his in his name that he decides as a, as a presidential act. You're going to rule against him? They're not. Yeah. I mean, they've, I mean they've again. They created a situation that they cannot get out of because for them to challenge him means that they could be easily be killed. Or arrested or thrown into fucking Gitmo or whatever. You think he won't do it? Again, he was literally charged with trying to persuade a state to send an alternate slate of electors so that he could make sure that he won the state in the Electoral College. Something he was he's literally been charged of being accused of doing. Yes. And there's pretty good proof to suggest that yes, he was involved with it, and a lot of people have already gotten convicted of being involved in that scheme. With this ruling. Oh, as long as it's an official act, it's all good. He can he can talk to his friends in Arizona, and he can talk to his friends in Nevada, and he can talk to his friends in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, and really gum up the fucking works. Yep. And potentially again, like and again, the whole point of the fraudulent electric scheme, for those who don't remember, is to make it so not not to get the fraudulent slate of electors to congress to certify the election it was to cause enough confusion yep. that congress threw their hands up in the air and said well we can't trust any of these we're going to have to do it the alternate method which means that the house decides who the who the president is and because republicans even though they didn't control the majority of the house control the majority of the states which is how that's decided yeah we just elect donald trump yeah you scared you fucking should be you should um, be if not, you're not paying attention. Here's a curious question. I just thought about it as you mm-hmm. were talking about that. Like, we don't know which ones are the the the, the proper electors. They don't have a list <laughs> ahead of time. It's fucking weird to me, right? Like, shouldn't every state have to offer like this is the well? List no, the pro- the proper it's the funny. proper electors was saying, hey, Trump actually won, so these guys should be. Yeah, should be nah, the guys that nah, are the nah, fuck that, electors. fuck that. Yeah. Like, nah, dude. Yeah. Like, the second we've decided that. Like the second that state gets called, that list should go out, right? Like these are Biden electors or these are, you know what I mean? Like it should be just done. And and, and by the way, for all of the hand wringing that Trump's team has been doing since 2020, saying, oh, it was stolen, this or the other thing, we did come perilously close to having that exact situation happen in 2020. People forget how close we came, but not for the bravery of a few public officials and a a pressure campaign. Uh, from the public on certain other public officials, I still I still remember the uh, the people from 
Michigan who were refusing to certify the election and then uh, call, you know, the fucking voters like, you sure you want to just ignore Detroit? And they're like, actually, we don't want to do that. Yeah, uh, they were like, here's this motherfucker's address. And they were like, oh, shit. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Look, look, I, and to that point, sometimes you got to scare motherfuckers. <laughs> like, you do. You know, you're like, all right, you, you guys want to play a game? All right, then let's play. Like, we're going to come to your house and we're going to rip you the fuck out of your house. Like, you know what? I'm good. I'm not really a big cog in this shit, so I'm going to go ahead and sign these papers. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. So, look, you got to win 2024. You got to win 2028. And you got to win 2032 because that gives you Biden getting a full run and then that gives whoever the next Democratic um, uh, president is a full run. You need them mm-hmm. to have a full run. And, and if you can get that, you might be able to flip the court from a 6-3 Republican situation to a 6-3 Democratic situation. And then when you do that, whenever you do that, by the way, when this you know, I'd, 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 I'd prefer, of, I'd, <laughs> I'd prefer a uh, eight, I'd prefer an eight, uh, an eight, five Democratic situation. If you don't mind, <laughs> that, that is perfectly fine by me. Or like 13 <laughs> to one, fuck it. Or 12 to one. Um, but, well, look, once second, once we get our eighth justice on the court, then Republicans can have one as a treat. Like it, it it's fine. No, <laughs> no, no, fuck that. I'm yeah. Maryland rules. We're not put giving you, you one put district. Your fucking, put your fucking boot on them. So. Yeah, no, nah, yo. Like make these fuckers pay. Like fuck. Oh, can, can we have one? No. Can we have the Secretary of Transportation? No. Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> fuck you. Right. So, um, and that's what Trump did, by the way. He broke that whole precedent. You know that, like. Every mm-hmm. every every uh, party, they would always yeah. Get every ca- every cabinet had one had one uh, person, at least one person from the opposite party. Yeah. Trump was like, "Nah, yeah. fuck that," and so Biden was like, "You know what? Bet fuck you too." <laughs> like they didn't do that for yeah. them. Like, <laughs> no. you know what? That's fair. Um, and by the way, it was a good choice to put uh, uh, Mayor, former S- former S- 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 Staff Sergeant, Secretary, Mayor Pete. <laughs> yes, he has all of his all of his titles will follow him forever. That's right. Um, <laughs> Super soldier, uh, Mayor Pete. So, like, winning those things matters. But the second you get control of the court, the second you get control, the first thing you do is you kill all of this shit that we're talking about. Uh, immunity, blah, blah, all of it. Gonzo, gonzo. You have a court case. You do like Republicans do. You got a court case waiting. And the second that shit gets done, you file that shit. And they here's, but here's, here's the, the other, here's the other thing, though. Here's here's the other thing though. So like, I'm not sure what the Supreme Court is basing. Like okay, like like we said earlier, like the absolute immunity. Right, right, right. Like like the absolute immunity for official acts. I understand where that's coming from. Makes Makes sense. sense. It's in the Constitution. Outside of that, I'm not sure where they're getting this presumed immunity for non official for for stuff that maybe is official act. So. Since it's not in the Constitution, mm, if you get control of Congress, you could pass a law that oh, says, hey, if it's not in the Constitution, you don't have protection. President, whoever. Uh, look, I like it. I like it. Shit. And, and, oh, and oh, by the way. Get that done right now. Like the second. And, oh, and, oh, and oh, by the way. Yeah. Oh, oh by the way, if. You can use evidence from official communications. Why? Because this president, this precedent was established in the Nixon case by the by the by the Burger Court. Yep. Or the Rehnquist Court. I can't remember which one. Rehnquist, I believe. Rehnquist. Okay. Um, But yeah, you can knock it down again. It is important for you to win the presidency and all of Congress. It is important. Kill the filibuster. Start knocking this shit down. That's look, look, you look, Democrat, Democratic politicians. We have been waiting on you and you have been playing nice guy and and fucking patty cakes and all this other shit. It is time to give people what they want. They want progress. They want real progress. And if you can, you can play, you can do this. You can, you can play by the rules. When the table is level, right now the table is not level. It level. It's That's it's right. bent towards one side. Yeah. So you can look, play by the rules when that happens. Look, there I, is. Go ahead. Uh, no, fin- finish yours because mine mine is mine is not important. No, no. Go ahead. So there's one thing I'm happy about with this ruling. Just one. 
this just, and, and it's completely unimportant. But it makes me happy on a personal level because I know it bothers him. This ruling ensures that John Ro- the John Roberts Supreme Court will now live along the same level as like the Dred Scott Supreme Court, yeah, and like the Plessy Supreme Court, yep, and stuff like that. Like that 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 brings me personal joy because I know that he cares about how how he's looked at historically. Yeah, you're. And it's not going to be well. Yeah, you're a garbage person. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, look, I think again, Democratic politicians have a very um, they have a role to play, and I think for the first time, I'm hoping they see it. I know that there are plenty of political, you know, uh, folks in the Democratic Party, like senators and stuff like that, that have long seen it. Right? They've been like, yeah, we should get rid of the filibuster, but I don't know that the like centrist Dems have ever truly seen it. If you don't see it now, you're never going to see it. This is like, this is your moment. This is, this is yep. the moment in a fucking Aaron Sorkin movie that you get your balls together and you go out there and you fucking beat the shit out of these guys. Like they stole something from you. You crushed and, them. And, and by the way, yeah. you, you listening to this podcast, I, I'm not, I'm, we're not saying you need to phone bank or you need to go knock on doors or stuff like that. Like if you can, that's great. Like, you know, absolutely do that if, if it's something you want to do and it's something you're able to do. You do need to tell anyone in your life who is considering sitting this one out or still on the fence, like, like you need to communicate the urgency to them. Don't fucking be all, you know, hair on fire about it, but just explain to them what's going on right now. And, and to, Jay, you know, Jay's point, we'll probably do something on project 2025 later on, but Make people understand, like this. This one, like, like I know we say everyone's important. This one's really important because right now, the the fucking uh, the the handbrake's been removed from the car in 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 the republic in a Republican presidential administration. Trump now not only has like he was already going in with the fucking YOLO presidency where he doesn't have to worry about getting reelected again, but now he knows that he will not be he would not be held accountable for any egregious shit that he does. Right. So he'll go balls to the wall. Yeah. By the way, um, not to like be a total dick about it, but having this situation is also not good for Trump. You don't want to appear like the only alternative to getting you the fuck out of there if you get back in is a very brutal one. Because you leave people no options, right? Yeah. Um, when people think that they can sue you to hurt you, then they feel like, oh, well, I mean, the law still exists. Like, I might not be successful, but, like, the law still exists. But when you tell people, like, ah, oh, he's a king. You can't do anything. And people go, oh, there's one thing I could do. <laughs> like, I mean, quite seriously. <laughs> there, but there's a reason why kings get overthrown. There's a reason why kings reigns and violence. Because there's no mm-hmm. other options. And when you set up a world in which people are starving and they don't have anything and they have nothing to lose and the only way to stop it as they see it is getting rid of you and they can't do it by any legal means. And that's a new change. People start to have thoughts. I'm not advocating anything. I- I'm really not. But what I'm saying is You are putting yourself in that situation. By the way, Supreme Court members, you are putting yourselves in that situation. You are. You're you're like and 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 if you think I don't know why they think think that they're untouchable. They're not, dude. You're like you're really if you think that we're being uh, you're not untouchable. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. If if you think that we're being hyperbolic, again, presidents have literally been assassinated for less. Yes. Yes. Like Trump does rallies. All the time. And he likes doing them. Okay, bro. I'm just saying you're setting yourself up for a situation where you're going to have to live like Putin, where you live deep into the fucking White House and you never come out because that's where he is. People don't see a situation to get him out in a reasonable manner. So what they resort to is violence. Again, I'm not saying that is okay. What I am telling you is that is what reality is. 
mm-hmm. people get desperate and they feel like they don't have any other fucking recourse, they go, oh, fucking let's go. Like that that's just how people operate. And by the way, if he wins in 2024, God forbid, if he does win, you will see this that country slide so fast, dude. It's not gonna be uh, Oh, it's oh it's that it's that country now. Uh, I, I see. I'm looking, I'm looking with binoculars, like, ooh, look, looking a little scary over there. Um, like my my, my God, Dead Pixels is like like he he talked about uh you don't you don't need an excuse to give uh someone from Baltimore, you know, like 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 uh, if, you know, something to be aggrieved about. Like they they he said they do that shit all the time. I said, Oh, they do that shit all the time. <laughs> Those <laughs> they <people>. shit. <laughs> I like to keep myself an arm. Like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I don't live in Baltimore. Anymore, yeah, so. <laughs> I live in the suburbs of D.C. Uh, asshole. Um, but <laughs> look, I live in America's pants. Okay, so like it's fine. Um, <laughs> but like in reality, people are going to get desperate. And you're going to watch the country slide in ways and at a speed you cannot fathom. When they're talking about firing hundreds or like a hundred thousand federal employees or some some crazy shit like that and replacing them with all know nothing psychos that are just you know uh loyal to them what do you think happens then what do you think happens to the dollar dude you think the dollar is gonna stay where it is like i pay oh and and, and and by and by and by the way these are gonna go to fucking dog shit dog by by shit the way overnight. um overnight. If, if if you think that oh like that would be very bad to see the country you know, turn to that level of unrest. Uh, think of some other knock-on effects uh, that are brought about by by civil unrest. Uh, nothing, n- nothing that's been going on from an unrest standpoint in the country that a, that a good war wouldn't be able to solve. Can you imagine what Trump could, would potentially get us into to distract from the civil unrest to try to try to you know gin up some kind of like a wag the dog style yeah. conflict to to try to pull people back together? I mean, here's the thing. absolutely. I mean, here's the thing. Yes, that's true. But he doesn't even have to really try. He's going to pull us out of NATO. That means that um, he's going to hand over Ukraine basically to Russia. Russia mm-hmm. will steamroll into Ukraine because they won't have any weapons. Europe will be the only ones providing it. And then basically Putin will say, if you don't knock it the fuck off, I'm coming there next because I am coming there next. And then he will start to steamroll through Europe. When that happens, they will have no support from the United States because – the U.S. will be out of NATO. And as we talked about last time, there is no, or Biden mentioned this in the debate, there has never been a major war in Europe that we were not, that stayed in Europe. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. We will be pulled into it. So then what mm-hmm. happens? So now we're in the middle of what? Potentially World War Three. Cool. I'm glad we didn't vote for the old guy who had a hoarse voice the other night. Was it worth it? So... All that being said, I had plenty of anger and uh, general disrespect for Republicans in in this uh, because they have let this asshole uh, fester and it get worse. And now it's out of control, right? Like they can't they can't control mm-hmm. him, right? Um, he's Frankenstein's monster. Um, I've got a lot of disappointment. I'm just I'm just, I'm just thinking about the person that's really. Who who can who really shoulders like the majority of the blame for all of this? Ronald Reagan. Well, always it's always Reagan, but no, that's not who I was thinking of in this case. There's there's one person who is uniquely to blame for this entire confluence of events. Like like, like if this person had made different decisions, we would not be in this specific instance where we are today. It would be impossible. His dad not wearing a condom. No, you're 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 thinking you're thinking too uh too broadly. Okay. I'm Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Okay. Mitch McConnell stole the Supreme Court seat from Democrats from Barack Obama. He 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 ran through he stole a third too. Supreme Court seat for Donald Trump. Yeah. He didn't push Republicans to bar Trump from holding political office again. That was his in the wake of the mistake. second impeachment. His biggest mistake. If 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 those three things had not happened, we would not be here talking about this right now. Shit, if the be. one thing, if the one thing didn't happen, the one yeah. thing didn't happen. If he had just said, "Republicans, vote your hearts" or whatever bullshit, right? Because you're mealy mouth coward. 
if he would have just if they would have knocked Trump out after Jan six and said this guy cannot run for political office anymore, they would have suffered a major loss. They probably suffered one or two more after that, but they would have been they'd have gotten out of it. We would have had a democracy. We'd still be fighting over shit, but we'd have a democracy. Mm-hmm. That's not what we are, that we are we are on the cusp of losing. We quite literally are. Um, so I have I have a lot of rage and disappointment for Democrat uh, Democratic um, politicians as well. I do. Um, Mm -hmm. because I don't want to hear a bunch of Millie mouth bullshit from you. I want you to get, get your, your big boy pants on and go to fucking work. It's enough being nice. It's enough. It's enough. We've played this nice game. You're going to nice yourself into a fucking gulag is what you're going to do. Right. Trump came out today and said that Joe Biden is going to pay, um, basically like he's going to pay a price for Steve Bannon being locked up. These motherfuckers are telling you, yo. They're telling you. Believe them. Believe I mean, them. <laughs> I'd like to know how Trump plans on enforcing that, but okay. <laughs> no, but he's <laughs> saying if he's ruling. president. He's saying if he becomes president. You think he won't lock them up? You think he won't lock up Joe Biden how? and Kamala? How? How can he? Act. They are against the democracy, whatever. Who the fuck cares? It doesn't matter yeah. what the reason is. <laughs> like, But uh, what I'm saying is he will at least attempt it. All that lock him up, lock him up shit that he didn't do the last time. I mean, he, he, he can attempt it. The, the, the one thing that the ruling does do is it makes any, like, all the fucking bullshit that Republicans have been talking like, oh, Joe Biden did this, Joe Biden did that, completely null and void. Oh, yeah. No, it, you can't. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't, you yeah. can't have it both ways. Like, you know, like, he, fuck off. Right? Like, yeah, either the president's immune or he's not. So. Right. So, but what I'm saying is he's very much, they're very much telling you, what they w- at least want to do, whether they can do it, what they want to do. And frankly, I don't want a country where those guys even have an opportunity to try. Okay. No. So I have, I have a lot of anger for the Republicans. I have a lot of anger for Democrats um, for uh, a myriad of reasons, but I haven't, I have anger for somebody else too. And it's, and, it, and it's uh, people that um, don't get talked about enough. Voters. <laughs> okay. Voters. I, I thought you were going to talk about, uh, your Chinese. favorite progressive commentator. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> no, but they, but they, you can lump them in too. You can lump them in too. But it, but it's voters. Over the last couple of days, uh, in the midst of some of my doom scrolling, uh, and then I just got angry and I was like, "Why am I doing this to myself? I love <laughs> myself. Why am I reading this?" Um, oh, you, you, you can't imagine how many, how many podcasts I listened to on Friday last week is, as, as no, some form, dude. as some oh. form of self flagellation. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just beating. <laughs> Like in that Dan Brown book, like, ah, it was worth it. Like it it was not worth it. Um, (laughs) Here's the thing. We have to stop as voters laying all of the blame on politicians. We, the people is in the beginning of the constitution for a fucking reason. You have the government you have because you chose them or Mm -hmm. in a lot of people's cases because you didn't make a choice. Okay. We hate that. I fucking hate to uh, paraphrase this, but it's very true. We are the future that we make, right? That's fucking Terminator, right? Like, but we are though. I'm a giant (laughs) nerd. Um, (laughs) Like you can't get away from it. Like, but we are the future that we make. So this idea of like Democrats haven't done enough and Republicans are the worst. They are there because we made choices or lack thereof, which is also making a choice. 50% of the country does not vote uh, of the voting mm-hmm. age does not vote. I'm not, I'm not saying there aren't people who get out and stand in lines in Georgia for eight hours and they're like, they're fucking in the rain and all. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the people who go out and vote and go out and vote and pay attention or in it and they're fucking involved. I'm not talking about them. So if you're like, but that's not me, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person behind you. I'm talking to your mom, your dad, your uncles who don't vote, who find an excuse every single time an election comes up to tell you that both sides are bad and they're equally as bad so they can turn the fuck off. Or I'm talking to you about the person who votes and turns the fuck off. Enough is enough. That time is over. Your democracy is dying because you have decided that you don't give a fuck enough to care about what's happening in it. It is not just because you voted for Joe Biden and Joe Biden didn't fix it. Fuck that. You vote and you hold Joe Biden accountable. 
We got it. I saw I I got downvoted into fucking oblivion because this guy was like, well, we voted, we voted, we voted, and Democrats still haven't done anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Put your big boy pants on. You got to vote again, motherfucker. It's not a one-shot deal. Democracy dies when people stop giving a fuck. It is a, this is a forever war, okay? Like, this is going to go on until you die. You have to keep voting. It is, fascism and your rights being taken away is always at the horizon. Always. It's always mm -hmm. there. You have to just keep pushing. Oh, I'm tired. Me too. You think I don't want to just turn the fuck off and talk about the new X-Men movie coming out? Of course. But I'd like to talk about that and concentrate on this. You have and, to keep and, and by the way, by the way, like Tough it's shit. been said, it, it like when people talk about voting, what's the term that they usually describe what voting is? What kind of task is voting? The civic duty. Yeah. The word the word duty carries a lot of duty. lifting. <laughs> it carries a lot of uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of heavy lifting in that phrase. Because calling it a duty means that it might not be something that you want to do, right. but it's something that you need to do. And I'm not. And and by the way, I'm not just talking about coming at, to to Jay's point, coming out every four years and saying I did my part. Every two. No, no, no. Every two, by the way. Every two. Yeah. Not and and and, and it's not only that. It's not only that. Number one, never been easier to vote. It, it literally in this day and age has never been easier to vote. Than it, it at any point in American history than it is right now. Tons of states do mail in ballots. You don't have to even leave your fucking house. Tons of states do early voting, so you don't have to wait in long fucking lines. You get fucking paid. Like, like pretty much every job gives you paid time off to go vote. Right. If you if you wanted to take it, like it's literally never been easier to just fucking do it. Okay, so that's number one. Number two. And again, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody from experience, okay? I'm talking to somebody from experience. Sign up for a fucking political party, man. Fucking, you got, you got to sign, in, unless, unless you live in a state with open primaries, you got to sign up for a, for a political party. And here's fucking why. Because you can't bitch about Joe Biden being the Democratic nominee if you didn't go out and vote in a fucking primary. The reason that Joe Biden is the Democratic nominee is because in, in 2020, a majority of Democrats picked him to be their That's nominee. It. That's it. And in 2022, or 2020, 2024, a majority of Democrats picked him to be the nominee. Now, is that because no one's really fucking running against him because he's the president? Yes, but that's because he became the fucking president because the majority of Democrats picked him to be the nominee. So figure out which party most closely aligns generally not exactly, not 100%, but generally most aligns with your ideologies and fucking sign up for that party. It doesn't mean that you're fucking a card-carrying member. It doesn't mean that you have to go to the fucking meetings. It doesn't mean that you have to fucking turn out, donate and all this shit. No, it's just a fucking D or an R on your fucking voter card. But at least that way you get to vote in a primary and you get to have a choice. By the way, if you this this goes for Republicans too. You want bad shit fucking loonies to stop getting fucking elected in your districts and representing you in Congress and, and representing you in your state? Then vote for the fucking normal guy in the fucking primary. That's it. It's that it's it's that fucking simple. But to Jay's point, you gotta do it every two years. You can't just fucking turn off and it's and, and everything's going to be fucking okay because this shit matters. The thing that we're going to talk about when we're done this fucking rant, like like as bad as this fucking like immunity thing is and it's overarching and and how how it portends doom for the country, the Supreme Court did something else that from a day-to-day -day aspect arguably might be worse and in the short term as well. So again, you can't just fucking turn it off and and just come out and punch the ticket every four years for the presidential election. You can't be like, oh, it's the lesser of two evils. No, they, you have two choices. One person is going to align more closely with your ideals than the other person. You're not going to find anyone that fucking is perfect. You're not going to find everyone that fucking makes your heart sore and 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 makes you like really excited to go out there and cast a vote only to disappoint you in four years because you have an unrealistic expectation of what can be achieved in a bipartisan government. But there's going to be one person that aligns more closely to what you want to see done. And that's who you're, and, and that is your choice. It's not the lesser of two evils. I'm choosing to vote for this person because they 
represent me the best out of the options that are on the tape. That's it. Period, well, point blank, that's it. I mean, you have to be an adult. You have to be an adult about this. You do. Oh, it's a lesser, it's a lesser two evils. Dude, every time I hear an adult say that, it makes me so angry. Is that how you live your life? Given two choices, if one is not perfect, they're the, they're both evil. I mean, but I mean, look, like like if you're if you're forced to choose between going to McDonald's or Burger King, fine. You can use the phrase "the lesser of two evils" right. if, for that fucking show. Right, but when we're talking <laughs> about whether women can control their own bodies or not, there's not a lesser of two evils. One of them is bad. One of them is good. For like for that topic, it just it just is. Or 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 or, or get rid of the morality side of it. You you agree with one or the other stance on it, right? And to some degree, right? Like you, you yeah. don't have to be like fucking dead on. Um, you are not as as somebody said uh, to me, and I think it's a really good way of understanding this. You are picking someone for a job. You're not picking a spouse. You fall in love with your spouse, or 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 a bar buddy, or a best friend, oh. or you know, a, a magician, or you know, like, like a fucking a daddy, like, like you're not, you're not picking no. any of that shit, but no. to your you're point, just, yes, you are, you're you just are. at work and they're like, bro, we're hiring another guy to work next to you. Check out these resumes. And you're like, this guy sucks. This guy sucks less. This guy's pretty good, but he seems crazy. This guy's all right. Oh, this woman's rocks. And then this other woman rocks, whatever. And then you come in, you bring them all in. You look at them. You go, I don't like that person's face. And you go, get that person out of here. I like this person. <laughs> they seem kind of cool. Uh, we're gonna sit you to the side, and this other guy, uh, he's the this is the last person, so it's out of these two, right? They made it to the final round. Which one do you want? They're the lesser of two evils. Cool, your boss is gonna fire you for not being able to make a basic job decision, right? The reality is, you pick the one who's closest. You don't, you're not picking a spouse. You don't have to fall in love. You don't gotta love Joe Biden. I don't love Joe Biden. Like an old, an 81 year old white man in America. This is my choice. Get the fuck out of here. No. <laughs> But he is the only choice that gets even remotely close to the things that I believe. I am way to the left of Joe Biden. I can guarantee fucking to you. However, Joe Biden's going to get me like 85% to eighty-five percent of the shit I want. I'm not going to just turn off because I can't get the last 15%. You know why? Because I'm 44 and not 4. That's the fucking difference. If I don't get everything I want, what's the point? I don't know, man, because that's life. What the fuck? And if you agree with every single thing a politician says, spoiler alert, you're a fucking sycophant. You're a sycophant. You're not like <laughs> you're not actually paying attention to things. Like that that's how I know. I love everything Donald Trump does. They are just fanatics. They're fanatics. Ask a Trump supporter a thing that Trump believes that they don't agree with. Ask them. They can't give you one because they're fucking fanatics. That's why you don't listen to lunatics. Right? Ask the Democrat things they don't agree with Joe Biden on. They can give you a fucking million answers, right? But they go, oh, he's still better than the other guy. Exactly. That's it. That's your job. Yeah. Just pick the guy who's best for the job in this case. Um, all right. Let's take a break. I'm going to – this show is going to be totally for free because um, this is uh, this is one people need. Too to important. It's too, too important. important. It's too important for us to make more money. Let's talk about this Chevron thing. I assume that's yeah. what you're alluding to. Go ahead, take it away. It is what I was alluding to. Yeah, this, so th this is the decision that actually might be in the short term a lot more impactful. So we talked about this a few months ago when the, the case was, yeah, not not just the earth. I mean, there's there's a lot of fucking ways that this could be really bad. So we talked about it a couple months ago when the case was before the court, um, and they and they telegraphed uh, their decision here. Um, Chevron is a legal precedent that originated during the Reagan administration yes. that basically said that the people that are in federal administration that, that are in federal, um, uh, what's the word I'm fucking looking for? I can't, I can't fucking think of it. Federal agencies. That's, that's the real federal okay. agencies are the subject matter experts. Okay. And in, 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 in their field, right. in their makes field. Sense. And, and and so if a legal challenge came up, uh, again, like saying like, oh, what they're doing, uh, this is wrong. The court would defer to the agency because, again, they're the fucking experts. They yeah. they know their job. A judge doesn't know about environmental regulation. A judge doesn't know about, you know, finance bylaws, stuff like that. 
to, you know, like, like chances are they probably don't. And this is the way it was for 40 years. And this Supreme Court said, uh, you know what? Nah, we're, we're, we're giving these federal agencies way too much power. And this is putting a, an, a, a unreasonable clamp on, on businesses. On innovation. And, yeah, and it's, and it's stifling innovation. Uh, according to John Roberts in his decision, uh, writing for the majority, and this came across uh, party lines to, to no surprise, um, he said Chevron was unworkable and it allowed federal agencies to change direction without input from Congress. Uh, Congress did had, have input when they made the fucking agency and when they budgeted what the agency is supposed to receive. That's Congress's fucking input. They created these agencies because again, it's not feasible for Congress to deal with the minutia of what federal agencies deal with. You put it in the executive branch, you hire experts to fucking do the job, let them make the small decisions and you can control the big stuff. Makes total With sense. their help. Which is with again, their help. So now this opens up this idea of yeah now now companies. now courts are the experts now courts are the experts expert. right yeah. and look you know it let it be you know let it be said that this idea of you know the federal agencies you know being the experts while eliminating that right and deferring it to the courts what you're what you're basically saying is. <sighs> How do I phrase this in a proper way? Let, let me retool this. We look at we look at the Supreme Court, especially um, as being like this sort of um, like a fascist organization at this point, right? They're, they're just or um, like entity, right? They're just like pushing these laws that allow for like the executive to have like unlimited power and stuff like that. But never forget that their first their first thing, forever and always, is they are corporate shills, right? Mm -hmm. um, the, the right wingers on the court. So this idea is just to give more power to corporations to challenge regulation. That's all it is. And so then what you're doing is you're throwing it back to the courts. The courts don't understand, right? If it, God forbid, mm -hmm. if it makes it to the Supreme Court, they're going to be like, yeah, but I say, well, that, I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal for a lot of these. Are, yeah. Corporations are yeah. correct. Absolutely. And corporations have tons of money. So they're going to appeal all the way up to the Supreme Court. And they know that everything that comes to the Supreme Court, because they are corporate, um, uh, shills, they will they will give a fucking uh, rubber stamp to. Thus, regulations will die in the train industry, in the you know the oil industry, oil and gas, and everything. Yeah, think, think I mean again, like do yourself a favor and go on Wikipedia and look at all the positions, look at all the the cabinet positions that exist inside of a presidential administration, and think about all the agencies, the federal agencies that are based off of them, the cabinet positions, ESA, OSHA, uh, CFPB, um, the EPA, like, you know, like, like the fucking, the, like, like the people who determine that services. food, the, 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 F, the FDA, uh, the fucking FTC, like, like think of all these fucking companies or, or agencies that are involved in this, that again, before, they were the experts, and now you're just going to have legal challenges out the fucking wazoo because now you know they know that if they can get a sympathetic judge, or if they, to your point, if they can get up to the Supreme Court as it's currently constituted, that businesses and other agencies that don't have your best interest in mind, that only have their bottom line in mind, are like if they can profit, they're gonna they're gonna fucking fight it. And because the Supreme Court is like, ah, we're, we'll, we'll be the experts. We'll, we'll weigh these two contesting uh, points of view, even though we don't truly understand this stuff. And we will, uh, we will make a decision based on the fact. That's, that's not a smart way to go. No. And by the way. Not a smart way to go. The Supreme Court is, you know, they're, they're oh so busy. They're oh so busy. They're literally creating more work for themselves. Right? Like, oh, oh, they're, oh, they're oh so busy? They're oh so busy. You think that, huh? You think you think they're oh so busy? No, no. I think they that's that's their argument. Is that you know they have uh, to wait? That is the, that is factually untrue. This, this Supreme Court. No, I know Court it's not. I, yeah, I know has heard not. the has heard the fewest cases this term than the Supreme Court has in like literally decades. 
No, no, I know that. But, they, yeah. you know, the fact that they waited so long for the immunity case and everything else, like, oh, mm-hmm. well, we've got so much to do. To, yeah, they don't. But what I'm saying is by opening this floodgate, you are now going to have all of these corporations pushing all of these cases to the Supreme Court. You know. Well, congratulations, you're going to have to rule on all this shit. Now, of course, they're not going to really even be paying attention because they're like, it's rubber stamp. I can, listen. I can rubber stamp. Well, they, they, don't, they don't have, I mean, they might not have to rule on it because, again, if, if, if the appellate court's like, ah, like, we agree, businesses are great, let's, let's fucking roll, then they'll be like, oh, we don't even need to hear this. We're good. Let, let, let the lower court decision stand. They're not, they're not going to make more work for themselves. It, it, it all depends on who the, who the judges are. And again, like we've seen, businesses have gotten wise and are now doing like the federal equivalent of judge shopping, yeah. bringing these cases in, in, in circuits where they know that they're likely to get uh, the decision going in their way. Now the federal system has done a little bit to try to curb that, but it's not been codified into law. Like, like it's not, it's not something where it's like, Hey, you have to bring this case in the, in the jurisdiction where it originated. No, like let's like, look, ooh, ooh, let's incorporate a company in Texas so we can bring it here. And that's, and that's continued to be happening. So it's insane. It's insane. Look, look, they did this. They they legalized bribes. <laughs> like it's insane. Like this is this is this may go down as one of the worst sessions um, of the Supreme Court. Oh no, there there <laughs> there's no might be about it. Buddy. Like, <laughs> like it is. It is it, this this will this will one hundred percent. Um. Yeah, oh, this it, this this it'll, it'll ring in infamy. Um, when you guys are trading yeah. bottle caps for uh, for bread, uh, this is when you can talk about it at the campfires at night. Um, when the radioactive very very running around. Very very quickly, two other decisions of note. Um, <clears throat> so they also determined that uh, that the January Sixers uh, charged with obstruction uh, were improperly charged. Like the, they they said the federal government um, cannot sustain a, a, a charge of obstructing an official government proceeding against the people that literally stormed the fucking Capitol to prevent the election from being certified. Now that sounds really bad. Um, it actually apparently only impacts like 20% mm-hmm. of the cases from January 6th. So it's not like extremely, it's not like the floodgates are opening and all the Jan Sixers are getting out of fucking jail. Um, but st- no, <laughs> but, no, that'll, but still happen on Jan- that'll happen on January 20th. Um, if Trump wins. Yeah. Uh, the only good ruling uh, that you could argue came from this is that there are, there were laws that Texas and Florida put on the books um, that would have prevented social media companies from reviewing um, specific political posts or accounts uh, that got appealed to the Supreme court. And they kicked those cases uh, back down Um and basically said that they had that those lower courts did not fully address the First Amendment issues that could be potential uh, with the case. This was a unanimous uh, vote from the Supreme Court, a rare unanimous vote. Um, and and basically, <laughs> this this was a weird one though because even though the decision was unanimous, um, there were five different opinions authored. <laughs> on, on on this, so it's so all the all the justices are like, hey, we all agree that this needs to get kicked back down, uh, but we feel five different fucking ways about it, hmm. which is very weird. Yeah, that's extremely weird. I wonder how. I mean, I so more how more to tap happen. Yeah, so more more to come on that one. Um, we'll see more from that as they re-adjudicate those cases. Um, but that was the only like potentially like even decent decision that's been handed down over the past week it, it it has been a shit show um legal scholars i'm sure will remember uh this this past week as like a week that will live in infamy to paraphrase uh fdr um it, as far as like as far as like the supreme court goes um but yeah just mo- monumental like like your kids and grandkids will read about these decisions at, at least the immunity decision if not chevron as well in in their social studies textbooks yeah Absolutely. You, you got to live through history. Yay. Yay. No. <laughs> if we don't if we don't get it together in the ne- in the next couple of months, man, you're about to be living through a whole different history. And like little Mexican kids will be like, yeah, wh- what's that pile of ash that's above us on the map? Like, well, that was America. I mean re- Repu- Republicans would love to fucking burn this place down and be king on the king over the ashes. 
their whole fucking deal. That's their whole deal. I, I've just never understood that. Like, I want to be the king of the, the ash heap. I mean, you could just be a senator in the fucking, like, regular country. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> Let's see how many people we can kill. <laughs> all right, cool. Great. Thanks. Um, all right. Uh, Biden's debate performance leads to all-time Democratic uh, bedwetting, as you wrote it. Um, look, we, we did a review um, live of the debate. Um, we agreed that it was not, uh, from an optics standpoint, it was not a very good debate for Biden. That was obvious. And, um, and that was more of a winner for Trump. However, the things that Trump was saying were fucking terrible and all lies, <laughs> literally all of them were lies. Um, and Biden, you know, famously, you know, stuttered and, you know, kind of old man his way through it, which was not good. Um, overall, it's just a loss for him. Yeah. And, and it led to a couple days of just fucking freak out panic fucking behaviors from from the media from democratic uh, congress people behind the scenes and all sorts of shit so ba so basically the knee jerk reaction from a lot of people in a sphere of influence and and from a lot of democratic donors and high ranking party officials on background based on that debate performance is holy shit uh, die. we have got to replace Joe Biden at the top of the team. Right. Um, no. <laughs> okay. This is, this is insane. <laughs> this is an insane argument. Um, and it's an insane argument for many reasons. Um, one, you are really overestimating that people who vote know who any of the people you're suggesting, um, are mm -hmm. any of them. People don't pay attention to this shit. Never mistake your love for this or your interest for politics as being the default for Americans. It is not. Again, 50% of the voting populace does not vote. Um, and I would argue the other 50% that do vote, I wouldn't call them the most informed. Okay, like yeah. there is a percentage of those people who are very informed and there's a percentage of those people who vote and they just learned who the candidates were 95 seconds before they walked into the um, into the booth. This idea of like, we could just put Gavin Newsom in there with kick ass. People don't know who the fuck Gavin Newsom is. You know. Yeah, outside, 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 know of, outside of California, I'd be surprised if Gavin Newsom had 15% name ID with the rest of the country. I bet he doesn't have 90%. Uh, name ID in California. There's people probably don't even know who the fucking governor of their own state is. Okay. <laughs> like that's just so it's fucking reality, right? Go to any state. There's plenty of people who do no idea. Plenty of people don't know who the fucking president is right now. Okay. So that on its face, you do not have a VP who I would argue is a person that people are chomping at the bit to be president, right? Like if you did, like, let's say it was a sort of a reversal and it was Joe Biden as president right now, and Barack Obama was his vice president. People were like, we love this Barack Obama guy. He seems mm. amazing. Then you could be like, all right, maybe this is the time. Um, so you don't have any of the people like by by by, by the way, in this and this is arguing like she could step in. I'm like, people don't know who the fuck big wretch is. By and 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 by the way, this is to, to go back to your vice president point, this is gonna sound really fucking shitty. But I think there has to be some truth to it. Here we go. Go ahead, Brad. Insult this black woman. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna probably do it inadvertently. But mm, if no, Kamala look, Harris, look, uh, let me just let me just stand over here. <laughs> I love Kamala Harris. No, go ahead. Yeah, I do too. But it, but if 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 Kamala Harris was obviously going to be able to like get the country behind her. And and was obviously ready to take that next step in the eyes of the administration. Mm -hmm. Do you think Joe Biden would actually be running for a second term? Okay, I'm going to answer that question right after mm -hmm. this. No, uh, like, after this <laughs> break. no, I'm going to I'm going to answer that question with a with a um, with a theory. Um, if Joe Biden wins. Mm -hmm. In 2024, and I don't think I still don't think that's a, that crazy. By the way, uh, I think a lot of people after that debate were I like, "I don't think it is either." 
Like that whole like the doom scrolling thing. Like again, these are people who are like, oh, well, obsessed with this show. And 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 we'll and we'll talk about we'll talk about what what the actual results of that debate were in a little bit. But yeah, you know. not as bad as you think it was. Um, actually, probably a lot better than people think it was. Um, and, but I think a lot of people go, oh, I'll drag a, that fucking dead corpse over the fucking finish line. I don't give a <laughs> shit. Right? Like I think a lot of people just like, literally dug their heels. I literally saw. I literally saw somebody say that they're like, look, Joe Biden could be dead and running for president. And I'm still voting for him. Over so. uh, but dude, <laughs> me, me. I'm like, whatever. I know how the shit works. They can't make the old, the dead man be president, but somebody else is going to be there. His name's on the ballot. I'm voting for him. Like it is what it is. Um, again, it could be a pet rock. I don't give a fuck. Um, so all of that being said, if Joe Biden wins, I don't think it's that crazy to just be like, thanks guys. We did it. We did it, Joe. I'm retiring. We, we got democracy saved. I'm passing the reins on to Kamala Harris and her VP. I, I know. And look, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think, I don't think you would do it on day one. Not maybe not on day one, but early, like yeah, uh, like very early. Like I, I could, I could abs, I could monthly. absolutely see him resigning after a year or two in that situation. No, I don't think it's absolutely. a year. I don't think it's a year. You don't think I don't so? Think it's a year. No, I give you six months tops. I give you six months tops. But mm-hmm. here's the thing. I think I think people would respect it. I think people would. They'd be like, "Yo, you got us over the fucking hump. Holy shit, we didn't think we were doing. Thank God." And I think if he was like, you know what, I'm good. Y'all so know. let me. So let me, I do think that that not, I think that is very much a thought process. By the way, and and so to mm-hmm. answer your question, I think that's a real possibility. I think it's a real possibility that he he just goes for a little bit and then he and then he retires. I think it's a real possibility. So let me let me let me not necessarily play devil's advocate, but let me challenge your theory. So sure. if if you think that that's something he'd be willing to do, would he not be equally as respected? For stepping down now and getting out of the race now and letting Kamala Harris, you know, take take her place at the top of the ticket. And 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 encouraging people to really get behind her and basically like, you know, she has my full support and this that or the other thing. Like he would uh, like I my argument would be that he would have the same level of people that would applaud him. Like that's that's the biggest thing that people were talking about is 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 this could be his his Ruth Bader Ginsburg moment. Like, like he doesn't realize that he needs to fucking leave and yeah. he's going to tarnish his, in, like he doesn't realize he's going to tarnish his whole fucking, his fucking 60 year almost legacy in politics long. by staying too long. Right. Yeah. No, that's, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. I don't know. I, I guess, I guess if I had to, if I, if I think about it, I would say I don't know if people would have the vigor behind her, but at the same time, people mm-hmm. will have the vigor behind dragging Joe Biden's dead corpse across the line. So I yeah. think they'd be like, cool, she can speak. So this is fine. Right? Like she's a perfectly competent um person and everything else. Like I, I don't and, think and, like, and by the way, I don't think you need to worry about I don't even think you need to worry about like people being like, oh, like Kamala Harris, P U, I'm gonna go vote for Donald Trump. That's not what I'm saying. But like I don't think Colin Harris is going to lose voters to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Do you like, <laughs> you no, know what I mean? No, like, no, I don't know. I think you're probably right. I think you're probably right. I'm, I'm not mad at that. Like I, I'm, I'm honestly mm-hmm. not mad at it, but if you're going to do it, you got to do it now. You gotta oh, do you it. do have to do it now. Yeah. The long, the long, the longer you wait, the, the, the least, the, the, you're the handicapping her. You're handicapping becomes, her. At that right. Point. Now look, here's right. the, the other thing. So I allow me to push back uh, uh, to mm-hmm. you. This is this is a problem though. Mm-hmm. This country has a real problem with women, and this country has a real and, problem with black women, very specifically. Yeah, I I hundred percent. I, I yes, that that is, that is the counterpoint, right? To that, and that, and that's and why when we were when we were him over the hump, and then him turning mm-hmm. it over to her, insulates her from that. Now, do I kind of yeah. slightly hate that because the first female president isn't one who won outright? Yes. But at the same time, look, sometimes you got to lower the room and dunk on these motherfuckers. Like, you just have to. And it is what it is. <laughs> like, it is. By the way, I'm just saying, she, I don't think she could beat Gavin Newsom if Gavin Newsom did a, like, if, if it was like, all right, your four years is over. Like, if he was, if he decided, like, it's yeah. my time now, I don't think she could beat him. I don't think she could beat him. 
Now she would get. No, I, mean, I don't think so. Get, she would get an opportunity to, to to run again. So I don't think the party would like. I, and Gavin's a team player, so I don't think he would be like, "I'm I'm I'm going in," right? Like I think he'd be like, "Fuck it, I'd sit, wait another four years." But I think I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I I'm I'm I don't. This is gonna, be, it's gonna sound fucked up again. I don't know that the party would extend her the incumbency uh, advantage. Like like they, they like they'd be like, "Look, like you didn't." really win to get here so i think we should let the pro- the, the the democratic voters have a say in who we're bringing up in 2028 now i yes i can totally see that except for one factor black women are a very large block yeah. for the democratic party and it's not a part it's not one you want to piss off like it's not one you want to piss off because I it's like, I agree that would look pretty shitty. I get it politically. I totally understand. Right? There's reality. It's, it's a t- it's reality. a tough fucking situation it, it because again, situation. like like we have recent history we can draw on to be like it's it's risky to run. A, like it, I'm sorry if Hillary Clinton was a man, she probably doesn't lose in 2016. Yo, she would have destroyed a, him. Yo, she would have destroyed that, him. That, that that's a fucking he, fact. But he weaponized. He weaponized. Yeah. Sexism. Oh well. I mean, you he think he was not going to be the same thing to Kamala Harris? That, but Come that's on. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And she's a black woman, you know. Like, I'm just saying, it's and it's also like, no one has done more for black jobs than Trump. Jay, what's a black what job? What the fuck is a black job? <laughs> what's a black job? <laughs> what's a black job? I don't know. I have a black job. I, I'm I'm black and I have a job. So I guess I, I guess I have a black job. Um. I, I think he would weaponize sexism in a way that oh, yeah. uh, in a way that we've seen before, but I think her being a black woman, it would be a million times worse, a million times mm-hmm. worse. And I'm not saying that's not the reason to take that fight. I'm saying that this fight is too important. Again, it's like I'm not saying that defending Obergefell and um, you know getting uh, Roe back in place is not important. But certain things have to come at a certain in certain steps, and I'm not sure that you want to have the first black woman president fight when the democracy is on the line. Because no offense to anybody, but sort of deep offense, white men ain't shit, and I do not trust them to look at the like look at um, look at this fairly. I do not trust them. I do not trust them. Look, to be honest with you, I don't trust white women to do it either. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> so like, to me, it's not, it's not the time. If you're going to do it, <laughs> here's a wild statement coming out of my mouth. We need an old white man. <laughs> like we do, like we do <laughs> because white people are going to go crazy. No, no, no. We need a, we need a middle-aged white man. We don't need it. No, no. In the, no, I'm saying very specifically right now with Joe Biden, we need an old white, yeah. man. we need an old white man to get across the line. Then you get an old white man cross the line, you hand that shit over to Kamala, run that fucking football into the end zone. But you cannot play with, dude, you're replacing a candidate. Like, this is crazy. Like, this is why the, this argument of replacing him is crazy. You're replacing a candidate. You want to put a, a woman in the place. You like, you saw what happened the last time. You want to put a black woman there. By the way, she's also Indian. Like, you, you want to add, like, dude, there are so many factors of white people <laughs> going nuts over this. This is a terrible idea. You take that old white man, you throw him across the line. He doesn't weigh much anymore. Get him isn't, across isn't the line. Dad, isn't her dad, uh, wasn't her dad Jamaican too? Like, do we need to see her birth certificate? Like, are we going to get birtherism back on the venue again Bro, here real quick? Like, <laughs> what are we doing? This is a terrible idea. There's an article we just talked about right before we went on air. It's like Michelle Obama you know, would beat Trump by 11 points according to a poll. Do you think Michelle Obama wants to be in this shit? Leave these women alone. They don't. They don't. <laughs> I, by the way, you see, you mentioned it's crazy that we're talking about replacing the candidate in July. Part of me that's actually really proud that this is the reaction that it shows me that the Democratic Party is a healthy party. Here's why. Mm-hmm. We saw the debate performance that Joe doing. Biden had. Yeah. We saw the debate performance that Joe Biden had. And we said to ourselves, we are willing to take a big risk to make sure that we 
protect again protect the country from this existential it's existential threat right. and this scared the shit out of us and we don't have full confidence that this is the guy and so we're willing to take a big swing the other guy has been embroiled in scandal has caused catastrophic losses tangibly for the party over the last eight years has been convicted of 34 criminal charges and still has another fucking 50 some odd indictments laying out against him and republicans are in lockstep behind this fucking dude that's how fucking broken their party is they have the work they have the most flawed candidate in the history of american two-party presidential politics and they're just like now this is the fucking guy we got we got to back him to the hill no retreat no surrender let's fucking go never find out that's how fucking broken their party is that's that's how sick their party is that's the hold that donald trump has on their party that's not a good place to be it's a much better place to have to be in a place where you're having this argument about whether or not we should replace joe biden if he's the right man for the job and we're this close to the convention and the election that's a healthy place to be because that tells you as a party that again that's to jay's point that's an enormous risk the last time this happened for the democrats was in 1968 arguably cost them the election like 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 that party like the 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 convention the famous 68 convention had a lot of raw feelings a lot of people like feeling really burned at the end of it you ended up getting hubert humphrey as the candidate who was not really like the strongest presidential candidate and it, it, it fucking and, and besides Nixon's like back channeling and shit like that, it fucking rolled out the welcome mat for Nixon to win that election. So it's a, it's a huge risk, but sometimes you got to take a huge risk, especially if if the if if it's looking like that things aren't going to shake out the way that you thought. Look, I I think it's crazy. I think people people uh, underestimate the power of incumbency, um, and I'm sure. People have very like like weird recency bias. They're like, "Well, Trump lost. Oh, yeah. and he was the incumbent." Like, yeah, but like that's rare, bro. Like that's super <laughs> rare. Like, when's the last time a Democrat lost incumbency? Good question, uh, Carter. Carter, yeah, that's true. Like, yep. but it's this is not. We've had two. We've had two in our lifetime of Republicans. Two. Yeah. Right. Like this shit is rare. And when it happened to Carter, it was like, "Whoa, holy shit!" Right. And by the way. Take into account, like, they back-channeled, like, hostage yeah. <laughs> shit in order to get him out of there. It wasn't like people yeah. hated Jimmy Carter, like, oh, he sucks as president. Like, no, dude. There was a also, also oil or gas crisis, manufactured gas crisis, and the hostage shit. Also, it, it does bear mentioning, this gets forgotten about in the Carter thing. Carter did not have the true protection of incumbency. He was primaried in 1980. If, if people oh, don't that's remember. true. That's true. You're right. So, You're right. so like, it is rare for, especially a Democrat, to lose, right? Because they like you know like do shit. Uh, like weird. Yeah. So like I I need people to understand that your doom scrolling and your political bedwetting is normal. And look, I'm about to be a super fucking nerd because I've been thinking about this. But this is one of the best analogies I can think of in this moment. Brad, did you ever watch a little small show? Not a lot of people saw it. It's called Lost. Hmm. Ever, did you ever hear it? Actually, that? I've never watched Lost. Lost is pretty good. <laughs> like up until a point. Then he just got fucking... Like, all right, all right, all right. This is a stupid fucking ending. But it was really good, um, especially in the beginning. In the like, first episode or second episode, Jack... Um, Matthew Fox, I believe, was his name. Played the character. Um, he's like a, a like a spinal surgeon, right? And they get a crash land. Oh, the plane, blah blah blah. Okay, they're down on the ground. They don't know each other, right? And he's talking to Kate, uh, who is like a semi love interest in the show. And he was talk. He's talking to her about like all these people are panicking, right? Obviously, they were just in a fucking plane crash. It's insane. Um, and he says like how he, he basically explains how he deals with panic. And I think it's a really good analogy. Mm-hmm. He says that – he tells a story. He says, listen, I was doing the surgery on this guy and I nicked his spinal cord, right, with a, with a scalpel. And all of this like spinal fluid came out and all the like nerve endings and everything. And he said that he took 
20 seconds. I think he says 10. Like he took 10 seconds of just sheer panic, right? Like not saying anything, but just in his mind, just this sheer panic. He took those 10 seconds to let that shit wash over him. Like, holy fuck. And then he said, took a breath and he got back into it and he fixed that guy and that guy could walk at the end. Right. And that's exactly how you should handle these moments. It is okay. I am not blaming anybody for doom scrolling or in Brad's case, self-flagellation by listening to like a bunch of podcasts <laughs> with other people freaking out. Um, I, I, I did a bit of that for like a day. Um, I'm not, I'm not mad at people for doing that. Take your breath, lick your wounds from the debate, get back up and keep fighting. If you fall down and you lay down and you do not get back up, that is how you lose. Getting knocked down and getting back up is not the way to lose. That's a way to win, right? So like you get back up and you keep fucking fighting. So take, take time, get your fucking doom scroll shit on. It feels good. It's a good dopamine hit. And then you go, <laughs> all right, we got to get back into the fight because me just being big, sad, doesn't make any sense. Right. And that is and, what, and, that's, and by the way, we, that's what this story is. It's just people. We, we being, said this on, we said this on debate night, by the way, remember this elections, not for five months or four months or whatever, whatever it is for now. Biden has has established the floor for himself. He now only has one direction to go. I don't. I don't think you're going to get worse than that debate was. No, on, I don't think you on, on last week. No, you can argue that Trump has set the ceiling. Like like that was the would, best performance be, that you could expect to see from Donald Trump. Yeah, and it wasn't a very good one. He's only got one place to go to, and it's the opposite. So, and and that kind of brings us into the next story where we want to talk about. So Trump won the debate. But how much did he really win the debate by? So, you know, post-debate polls were done. And by, you know, as you would expect, uh, Trump has the lead basically in like a like a polling average that uh, that the uh, the Hill has done here. Um, Trump has a 44, uh, 44 percent to 43.4 percent for Biden. So, So Trump leads by six tenths of a point. Okay. Very interesting to me, though. Go back a week in time and see where the polling average was a week ago. Uh, June 24th, 2024. Trump was at 44.8%. Mm-hmm. Biden was at 44% even. So since the debate, Trump has dropped eight tenths of a point in polling average. Biden has dropped six tenths of a point in polling average. They both dropped, and Trump is dropping harder than Joe Biden. Because here's the thing. We saw the reaction from that debate by regular voters. And while regular voters, you know, weren't, you know, that they didn't like, te- you know, focus groups and stuff like that, we're not sitting here like fucking blowing smoke up Joe Biden's ass. We're like, holy shit, that was fucking terrible. They also recognized that Donald Trump was equally as bad. Like, yeah, that he sound more with it than Joe Biden did. Yes. But the fuck, the shit that he was saying made absolutely no sense. He lied constantly. Like, the stuff that we were talking about as we covered that debate was apparent to other people, too. It's not like that we have some yeah. secret, you know, like, fucking debate vision, like, like hearing that we can hear through the bullshit. No. Trump, obvious. obviously, was speaking gobbledygook. And voters see that, too. There was one clip that made the rounds a lot. And this was a Republican voter. And he and and he watched the debate in a focus group, and they asked him afterwards. They're like, "Well, what are your thoughts?" And he's like, "He's like, I, he's like not feeling great." He's like, "Cause I look at Trump, and it's a hell no, and then I look at Biden, and it's an oh no." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 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 and this is a Republican. I mean, that, look, look, that's funny. Like, I'm sorry, that's funny. yeah. Like, 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 and this this is a Republican. Yeah. So again, like, you have people that are seeing this, and they're just like, "Holy shit!" Like, it's pretty bad. On both sides of the equation. Now you may say, "Oh shit!" Well, they're going to run out and vote for RFK again. As me and Jay have said, that's going to last right up until they hear RFK speak. <laughs> they're just uh, like, "Holy shit!" Uh, that it's guy, a trifecta. That, that guy's campaign uh, shared pictures of a nude woman on social media, I think, and oh, a cool. barbecue dog. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Eat. Cool. Yeah, he's the guy. Meat. Right? He, he's the yeah. guy. Um. 
But like, here's the thing. Um, and this is what I talked about um, during the debate coverage. Trump has been very much hiding. Remember they used to say, oh, Biden is hiding in his basement in Delaware in the last couple of days of the election. Trump only does Newsmax or One News Network or, or whatever. Not even. He and, does and his he, rallies. That's it. Mo- right. He mostly does his rallies. Because the more people see of him, the more they remember, oh, right, this guy's a fucking idiot. They remember, dude. That's why the numbers aren't Biden at 39 and Trump at, you know, you know, damn near 50 something. Because they can still hear him and they see him and they're like, oh, and also, by the way, we thought that maybe the, the muting the mics might actually help Trump a little bit. No, no, no. It actually it amplified his crazy, right? Because it's like, you don't hear anything else. There's no crowds. There's nothing. It's just that guy talking and you're like, what the fuck did he (laughs) just say? The question is this, and then he answers completely different. Well, and and weirdly, we we didn't consider this, but the fact that the mics were cut off made him, like, like a lot of the criticism you heard from people is like, they weren't answering the questions. It forced him to constantly circle back to make additional points about shit they were done talking about because he couldn't yell over because he couldn't talk over by. Yeah. I, I wonder, I wondered if his team recognizes why he kept doing that or if he even recognized mm-hmm. it, probably not. His brain is, is, is dead. Um, but it will be interesting to see, do they fix that in the next debate or is he, will he just keep doing that? Because it, Mm-hmm. Like his incessant like butting in and stuff like that was really, really annoying um, in all of his previous debates. But him not answering the direct question a- a- asked of him pisses people off across the board. Mm-hmm. Like unless you're in yeah. um, in MAGA and like you 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 know you're not even listening, right? You're not even watching the debate. You just you just like oh, he's so beautiful, right? Like you're, <laughs> you're not actually paying attention to the things that are being said to you um, through the, uh, the through the idiot box. But people who are actually listening to what he's saying as, you know, undecided people or people who are just fucking finally turning on to politics right now or, or Democrats. Nothing pisses people off more than you ask them a direct question and they don't answer it. That's really irritating. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yo, he asked you about child care. Why the fuck are you talking about immigrants? But like, even if you're like, well, you know, maybe you know, Joe Biden kind of sucks in this debate. But you're like, bro, just answer the question. Like. If if Trump had just answered the questions, he would have destroyed Joe Biden in that debate. But the thing is, he's not a very good debater because in order to be a very good debater, you have to be an active listener, and he's not one. He's not. He doesn't. He doesn't really listen. He just blusters. Like he just blusters. He finds a, an opportunity to talk about immigrants, and then he just brings it back to immigrants every single time. And the thing I noticed in that debate um, mm-hmm. is. He basically has become it's, – it's actually worse now. I, I, I'm shocked to notice, notice this. But it's actually worse. He's become just a, a list of high school superlatives come to life. Mm-hmm. Everything oh, yeah. is the 100%. greatest thing. Everything is the worst thing. Like he used to do that. But it was to the point where every sing- – go back and watch that debate. Every response he gives – is we had the best is. economy. Everything. We had the best water. We had the best air. We had, you know, we had the best, Everything. the best unemployment. We had the, like, <laughs> you know, like all, we the like, best, yes, we had the best Correct. immigrants. Like, you know, it's like, it's an, it's a mark of a person who doesn't know anything. Right. right. When you can't speak with new well, about anything, because he doesn't know, he doesn't know anything. I, I would love to, I would not love to do this. I would like someone else to do this. I would love to go back through the debate. And to see how many actual policies Donald Trump referenced during the debate, even even talking about past accomplishments. Like, I know he mentioned the choice bill at some point, which Bernie Sanders authored, but whatever, take credit for that, I guess, Donald Trump. I'll give him credit for the vaccine because that was part of Operation Warp Speed, which wasn't a bill, but a project that that administration kicked off. I give him no credit but, for that because any president would have done that, but sure. All right. Agreed. And probably done it better than he did, but 1, that's neither here nor there. But I, I literally, outside of those two things, cannot think of any specific program, 
or policy or whatever he mentioned in the like because to, to your point it was just a bunch of rhetoric we had the best this we had the best that he did the worst this this is the worst that maybe the tariffs like you can talk about the tariffs i guess as, as maybe like a third thing but that's that's really all i can fucking think of yeah dude, like it's weird it's like it's actually gotten worse yeah and and what it tells me is he wasn't really prepared apparently he skipped a bunch of sessions oh. of oh. debate press. oh like, he wasn't he, prepared at all he went outside of his way, out of his way to tell people that he wasn't doing any debate prep because he doesn't need to do. It. He doesn't need a debate prep. He's the best at debating. Prep? <laughs> Come on. I can't even take notes with me. Not that I know how to read. So what so what the fuck? I don't I really I, I stick by that. Like I really don't think he, he can read. Not well. I believe it. Yeah, I don't think he can I believe read. it. Um He can he can write his name. That is it. That's all, that's all he can do. Barely. I assign like, his name to things. It's like mountain range is done. <laughs> like that's all it is. Yeah, that is that is that is really like it's like a combination of a full signature. Because like my signature is just like a fucking literally like a B and a swipe. Like like that's literally my fucking signature. Right. But like his is like that, but he writes his full name out. Like but it's all like it's all pushed together really ah. tightly. Like you can barely fucking understand. It's, it's very weird. But anyway. It's a it's a lie detector, right? Like it's when you're caught in a lie. It's like <laughs> fucking just like going up and down. Like that's that's his stupid signature. So yeah, you know, at the end of the day, um Yeah, no, I I I, I don't think this debate was as bad um like politically as people think it was. Um, and mostly because people have their minds largely made up. Oh yeah. Oh, and by and by the way, to push back against our uh, against our um, Kamala Harris, um, I'm looking at saying it. like, article. yeah, like so. So again, um, based on a polling average, based on 50 polls where they polled Trump versus Kamala Harris, uh, Trump 45.7 percent, Harris 42.6 percent. Trump is a 3.1 percent lead in both. Now again, polling snapshot in time not predictive doesn't really mean anything except for how people are currently viewing things in this very moment it's a small sample size yada 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 but all the doom and gloom that people are like oh my god if we if we keep buying on ticket we're gonna fucking die horribly eh, the numbers don't necessarily bear that out like biden has some work to do 100 percent. he's got to work to get the confidence back that's been shaken from a lot of voters no doubt he has got plenty of time to do that we have not even gotten to the convention yet. No, we haven't. And look again, you get that man a a, a a lozenge or whatever. He said he was sick. I don't know if that's spin or not. I'm not. I'm not here to like just be like, oh yeah, he definitely was sick. I, I'm not gonna buy that. The political spin is very much a thing. Um, he seemed, you know, on fire the next day. So maybe it was. I I, I don't know. Um, He's, he seemed on fire an hour later when he went to an after party. And, and and there and there was audio of him speaking at this ad party. Like people people heard that audio, they're like, "Where the Bro, fuck was this guy?" You? Like, <laughs> like an hour ago. <laughs> like, what the hell? He was like, "Sorry, the edible." And, 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 he was like, "Sorry, the edible just kicked in." Like, oh god damn. Right. And 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 again, to to kind of put a button on this, so so the people do understand. So if you hear people talking about some the, the use of Biden as a malarkey uh, on the internet, the only person who can decide whether or not Joe Biden stays in the race for president or or withdraws is joe biden he has a an, he has enough delegates legally pledged to him to secure the democratic nomination today so until unless he volunteers to release those delegates because he's stepping down from the race he is the guy who will decide whether or not he stays on the ticket you can have and haul all you want i'm sure there are people in his orbit that are hopefully having honest conversations with him about the way forward. And obviously they're projecting confidence right now because what the fuck else are they going to say? The campaign's not going to come out and be like, yeah, I got to say we're, we're, we're mulling it over after last you're week. Fucked. Yeah. We're like, we're, uh, we're, we're, th we're thinking about it. No, of course they're going to fucking project confidence. They'll project confidence right up until they were to say, Hey, we, he's actually getting out of the race at this point, but he's ultimately the one at the end of the day that's going to make that decision. Nobody else can. So just keep that in mind. That's the that's the that's the deal. Uh, here here you go. By the way, uh, here's a uh, Quinnipiac poll from um, this from uh, this was from January of uh, January 31st of this year. Um, was that June? I'm gonna say why are you throw why are you throwing January? No, polls? I think I think I'm, I'm wondering why this person uh, 
put this up here. Never mind. I think this is incorrect. Um, yeah, but it was a polling between uh, amongst women, and it was like fifty eight percent to thirty six percent for Biden. Like you're not like you got room to run here, right? You know, oh, it's yeah. like it's the democracy is at stake mm. because this guy is running. But like this is not this race is not sewn up like oh Trump's definitely gonna win. It, please. Don't by, by, by the way, here's he, there, there's one more point I do need to make, and and I think this is important too. If you're worried whether or not Joe Biden can do the job of president at this age, understand also that being the president and campaigning to be the president are two very different skill sets that have nothing to do with one another at all. Yeah. No, campaigning campaigning and, and governing are two wildly different things. By the way, I, I just want to point out, and this is the thing that I was saying to some folks offline, the same, and I think it was to you, um, the same people who are like, oh my God, this is the worst, this is the worst, this is the worst, oh my God, what are we going to do, do? These are the same people online that were like, Joe Biden is back, baby, on that... Um, the uh, state of the union. State of the union. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They're like up is down. You know, black is white. Cats and dogs living together. Whether 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 vain uh, whether vain politics political commentators. Right. So yeah. it's like I, I know people. Are, oh well, that was different because he was reading from a prompter. Like, you motherfuckers ain't say that. You ain't say that then. You were you guys were just like this dude is holy shit. He's bringing it. Look, governing is different. Because if you're going to make the argument that this guy can't govern, we're going to have to – now we're going to have to talk about facts of like what's been happening in the Biden administration. Uh, I hate to tell you, but um, <laughs> doing pretty goddamn good, right? Yeah. And you're not just voting – you're not just voting for him. You are voting for that administration. Mm -hmm. And if I – look, take Joe Biden and Donald Trump out of it. I'm voting for the administration that is trying to help people get – there's student loans forgiven that is, you know, helping HBCUs that is doing real work, like on the environment, build back better, all of that. Up. I'm doing, the, I'm doing those guys versus you don't know who the fuck is coming in the administration of the other guy because all the same people from the first time are gone. It's all nutcases at this point. So whoever they bring about in to that say, is going to be absolutely terrifying. Has, so has Joe Biden had a single cabinet secretary leave his administration? I don't think so. I don't think so. I can't. No. I can, it, it, if it's happened, I cannot think of one. How much, just, just, at, just at the cabinet secretary level, how much turnover had Donald Trump had? Dude, uh, at this hold point on, in hold on, because this is, this is a very good question. Is it a third? Dude, is it half? Like, it's, like, it's like, I feel like it's like, I, I, like like by so so by the time we had gotten here, he was on his second attorney general. Was he on his third secretary of defense at this point, or was he still only on his second secretary maybe, of defense maybe, at this point? It might have been like a second at that point. All right, here is a list. Um, these are just officials, but I'll just read you. Um, the major ones. So the second Sec Secretary of State. Sec well, Secretary of Veteran Affairs, gone. Uh -huh. David Shulkin. Um, and he was gone almost uh, a year, four, 408 days tenure. Um, National Security Advisor, H.R. McMasters, gonzo, 413 days in office. Rex Tillerson, the big dog, Secretary of State, 406 <laughs> days. Shit. Fucking moron. Um, <laughs> uh, fucking moron. Uh, John... Um, McEnty, that uh, that fucking douchebag who started the um, the 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 right stuff uh, dating. Oh guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has a shitty Twitter or TikTok account. That guy, I want to throw down a flight of stairs. Um, but uh, four hundred twenty twenty five guy. Yeah, of course he is. <sighs> Personal aid, and then he just g he gave that guy a different position. It was fucking insane. Like, yo, you carry the president's bags. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking insane. Gary Cohn, director of National Economic Council and chief economic advisor to the president. I, I, again, you're you're talking about directors and shit. I'm just talking about cabinet secretary. All right, hold like on. like 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 if we if we if we start expanding the search, like that's gonna Dude, it's, that's it gonna really limited. It's just like an unlimited list. 
Oh, um, yeah. Tom Price, Secretary of Health and Human Services. Two hundred. Oh yeah, days. Tom Price. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit, Sebastian. Gordon. Insider trading. Um. Man, he I, mean, really I think this guy should be mentioned, in fairness. Uh, Steve Bannon, um, 211 days. That seems really short. That's crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, never forget uh, Anthony Scaramucci, six days. The famous uh, Mooch. Right. Um, Ryan, Ryan Zinke, I don't think, lasted the whole, the whole fucking term. No. Yeah, like... like Sean at, at, Spicer, I, I remember to... that? Sean Spicer, 183 days. Uh, White House. Yeah, he 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 was on press secretary uh, number four at this point. Trump. Won. Yeah, Reince Priebus, Gonzo sent to Ireland. Um, he he was on. Yeah, he was on. Uh, he was on chief of staff number three. No, four. Didn't Mick Mulvaney have a cameo as chief of staff for for a hot second? Yes, he did as well. Yes, he did. Um, National Security Advisor uh, Michael Flynn, twenty five days. Uh, acting attorney general, Sally Yates, Gonzo. Yeah. Like dude, there's so many, there's so many, so many. So yeah, it's, yeah. um, Oh, there's a Wikipedia. I bet this thing is a fucking beast. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Point, point is, uh, it's, a you know, lot. Th- there's something, there's something to be said for stability, uh, at the top of the, uh, at the top of the government. Yeah. Just saying. So, um, damn, dude. One lady took off his January 20th, uh, left off his January 23rd. She was like, I'm out. <laughs> like, God damn. She was there for three <laughs> days. The fuck happened? Like grand opening, grand closing. Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, it's, um, I'm voting for the administrations if nothing else. Like, and again, you know, like, for, for Barack people Obama that are Biden, didn't have major better... turnover either for in eight years. Yeah. It didn't for for people that are Biden nervous. That's another thing you can point to too. Like, hey, again, when it's, it's not just the one guy. Like, he comes with a lot of other people. Yeah, and again, that ties back to Project Twenty Twenty Five. You got to keep these few. Look, and also, look, you got you got family with government jobs. You better shut the fuck up. Like, I don't want to hear a goddamn thing. These people need money. Like, this is this is a real job. But they will toss them, and they'll put a bunch of nutbag loyalists in who will fuck shit up. They're not educated on the shit that they're going to be dumped into they're just loyalists it's kind of, kind of a feature not a bug actually so yeah. <laughs> a, a you won't even have to draw that. on the hurricanes they'll just do it for him so yeah um, i i don't like this hurricane map i want you to make it so that it's not going over the united states like all right sir no problem cool here it is oh my god look at all these americans oh no why why is the coastline being devastated we thought there wasn't the hurricane coming well see here uh there was a sharpie uh, a sharpie like turn that had it going to Mexico. I'm like, oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about the weather; it doesn't have to be official. Let's um, let's fire a nuclear missile into it. Remember that? That was the plan. That was the plan. To, fire to, to a nuke into a in, hurricane. Throw a nuke into the eye of a hurricane, and that'll that'll uh, dissipate it somehow. Holy shit! Y'all want to let this motherfucker be president? That seems like, <laughs> yo, that alone is one of the most insane things I've ever heard. By the way, do you know there's nuclear fallout like in the ocean, bro? Like he's like, what's the worst that could happen? What's nah, the bro. Ra- the, the 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 rate the radiation would have been fucking like, like it Everywhere. and the hurricane would have bounced against each other and canceled themselves out. That's how science works, Jay. I don't know where you didn't get your fucking science theory, but uh, clearly, I got that's my exactly how it would Trump go. University, the same place you got yours. <laughs> unreal i'm gonna nuke a hurricane is the number one reason this guy should not be president like he should be like if you people, say things like people that, really like, should people really should like like i know people love to like jump on the bleach line because of course like that it, like like was fucking crazy people really do need to bring up the one at the nuke hurricane shit a lot more often by the way i, I hate the fucking I, i'm like it, it's still like the the part of the debate that stuck with me the most honestly and again, I don't feel like enough people are talking about this. The, and we freaked out in real time when it happened. The dude was literally like, when Joe Biden was like, hey, you said that you said, you know, find people on both sides yeah. about Charlottesville. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. You're lying. What? Like, like, like here's a videotape. Like, you say, like, bro, this, like this. you definitely fucking said it. He's yeah, like, this literally happened. He's like, no, nah, that wasn't me. Like it, it's he, he took the shaggy approach. Big news. Like yeah. he took the shaggy approach. Like it wasn't me. Like like there's a video of you. Like 
I believe I believe that's a deep fake. Like, they call it deep fake. It's not real. Many deep fakes. Like like uh, you did it. So yeah, um, that was <laughs> that was a wild moment. Or when or yeah. when Biden is like listing out all of these things and and he goes and then you you slap with a porn star. He's like, I never slept with a porn star. Like that's the one. Thing that you to. <laughs> it feels like you definitely did sleep with one. Like then why'd you pay the money? Why'd you pay the money? Well, you know. Shit happens. <laughs> like, no, dude. You, <laughs> you paid you pay Stormy Daniels randomly one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Why? Why? Because you just you like you like her fake boobs. Like, what is the reason? Like, no, you did it because let's get real. She had one of the worst forty five seconds of her life. Like, for, <laughs> why is she sleeping with him? Like, it's so weird. That's the thing. I, I know. Like, oh, poor Stormy Daniels. But I look at her a little side. I like you've had sex with professionals. I've seen the tape, much like the, <laughs> much like the, you know, you know, you know, there are good people on both sides. I've seen the tape. You've had sex with professionals. Why are you fucking that guy? For money? Come on. Lady. Actually, I think she did it for free. Ew. Mm -hmm. Like that's a, that's a bad judge of character. Like I, I feel like that's a bad judge of character. Come on. Like, does that guy look like he's, he's walking around slanging anything uh, like that's a big deal? No. So I mean, again, the way the way she testified, I'm not going to I'm not going to. Again, there, go there, there's a power. Dude, there was a power, a power dynamic difference there, let's say, at that point. I wouldn't she even. 27. I wouldn't have talked to that motherfucker. Get out of here. Get I mean, here. I mean, yeah, uh, correct. That 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 is that is the correct uh, way. To go, so Ugh. I just uh, that part. Look, whatever happens in the room, that doesn't make it acceptable or whatever. I'm just saying, like. Girl, gross. Like, come on, man. It's just disgusting. Yeah. Um, do better. Uh, I, I've seen, I've seen you do better. Like, I, I've seen. There's tapes. Uh, quite literally, quite a lot of them. Um, so yeah, it's um. Look, th this guy is this guy is not to be trusted. He's not to be trusted, and none of these guys are to be trusted. One last story. Um, it's a bit of a. Did you think something else was going to happen? Story. Um, <laughs> Three South. Carolina. I mean, I'm what? I mean, you, you actually no. Say, tell the story, and then I'll I'll throw my two cents here. Okay. There were three Republican women in South Carolina's uh, state Senate um, that took on their party to stop the total abortion ban from passing in the state last year. In return, they were all voted out in the primaries this year. They all got fucking canned. Uh, voters removed Senator Sandy Sandy Sen. Um, Henry Gustafson and um, Katrina Sheely from office during sparsely turned out primaries in June and by doing so completely vacated the Republican wing of the five men, five member sister senators, uh, a female contingent that included two Democrats um, and was joined in their opposition to the abortion ban by these three Republicans. So Republicans were like, that's cool. Uh, you're protecting your right to your own bodies. Get the fuck out of here. And then those three women learned that Republicans even though they'll take your votes and they'll take, take your um, power that you add to them, they don't give a fuck about you as a fundamental person. They do not. And you should not. Um, I, they, you, you know what? They're probably not shocked by this, but I also hope that all three of them have their head held high. Again, if you're going to like, yeah. if you're going to lose your office, this is a good reason to lose it. Yeah. Go out big. I agree. Yeah, I mean, look. I mean, they this, this, just this said is nothing the, and just pretended to be pro life when they're not. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, again, this this is the um, you know, the Barack Obama thing, the famous story where you know Obama talks about how a lot of people close to him were just like, hey, like if you pass, if if you get this health care bill passed, you will lose reelection. And his response to them, and I'm paraphrasing, but was like, if we're not here to do big things, then what the fuck are we doing? And why, and why the, and, and, and why would I want to like, like, I'm not here to win reelection. Like I'm here to fucking do stuff. And that's, and that's, that's the mindset that every fucking politician should stand up say, not, like, don't worry about your next fucking election, work for the people and the people will work for you. Now, obviously in South Carolina, if you're Republican, you you get the administration or you get the legislation that you fucking want, I guess. So, and, and, and apparently Republican South Carolina voters, Want uh, Republicans who are going to take away women's women's uh, bodily autonomy? Yep. That's what they're going to get. The future is what you make. We yep. the people. That is. A, that I'm telling you, it is a thing that I think people take for granted. 
They think that the and, politicians and if, are supposed to save them. You yeah. are the ones and, that make this government. And and if that scares you as like a liberal in South Carolina, be like, holy shit, like you're gonna get crazy Republicans in, they're gonna take away women's rights. Uh guess what? You're in the wrong fucking Carolina. Just go up north. North Carolina fucking kicks ass. Yeah. North Carolina rocks. And it's and it's and it's perfect. So, you know, win some. It's it's, it's well on it's well on its way to being blue, baby. Like it's well on its yeah. way. Uh, like you can't put all those fucking college kids together and, and just keep it red. Like, that's not how that's going to work. Like, no, they vote, uh, which is why they don't want them to vote where they go to college. It's the number one reason they're like, ooh, mm-mm. too many liberals all spread out across the South. We got, no, nah, nah, get them <laughs> out of here. Um, go back to Colorado, where the fuck you're from. So, um, yeah, it's um, like they paid an ultimate price, but at the same time, to your point, like, they truly believed that women should have their right to their own bodies. Shocking, shocking news. They're women. So they understand very, um, very directly. And, um, it, it, what it should teach them is that that party does not give a fuck about you. It is not the party of small government. That's a lie. Um, it is not the party of freedom. That's a lie. It's certainly not the fucking party of fiscal responsibility. That's a They'll cut taxes bad. wherever they fucking get. <laughs> They they are the party of austerity. That's hundred percent true. Yeah. But when it comes to being fiscally responsible, no, 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 no. for for the for the poor, austerity for the poor, not yeah. for the rich. <laughs> no tax cuts for tax cuts for you, small American flags for everyone else. Um, <laughs> so it's um, I I thought that story. I was like, wow, that's fucked up. And then I was like, well, it's more of a leopard leopards eat my face party situation, but. Know who you're but again, I, like I don't think I don't think any of them are like like in reading some of the quotes further down the article. Like I don't think any of them are surprised or don't or regret like regretting their yeah, decision yeah. in no, any way, go, shape, or form. Yeah, no, you go you go with your um, your head held high. I think that's a very good point. Um, all right, that is it for us. Um, big show. Um, look, man, give a fuck. If, if, if nothing else, if that if that can be the lesson here, you got to give a fuck. And you can't just give a fuck for a little bit. You got to give a fuck always. You just do. And politics is exhausting. We talk about it and every week. You guys just have to read about it every once in a while or listen to us talk about it. But you got to give a fuck. You just do. And and I will, again, implore everybody to just follow the uh, the Wayne's World uh, way of spreading spreading the good word. You tell two friends and two friends. And they'll tell two friends, and so on, and so on, and so yeah. on. <laughs> it's that easy. Um, all right, that is it for us. Wow, we are giant nerds in this episode. That's crazy. It's true. Uh, it's very true. All right, that's <laughs> it for us. We will see you guys next week. See ya.